the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. The reliability of God's word. When it comes to exploits in the kingdom, please listen. The principal channel, listen to me please. The principal channel for receiving the miraculous is faith. The principal channel for participating in the miraculous is faith. Are we together now? And your faith is inactive until the word of God brings it alive. And so I want you to please pay attention. There are so many believers who expect God to step in and bring healing, miracles. I was so touched whilst the testimonies were being shared. And, um, but they're not surprised, only grateful. I would be surprised if I were the doer. Are we together? The integrity of God's word. The Bible has this to say. It says heaven and earth, listen, shall pass away. Heaven and earth shall pass away. You know why they will pass away? Because the word created them both. Are we together? Heaven and earth shall pass away. But the word of the Lord abides forever. The principal channel for committing God to perform in your life is the word of God. Please listen. The principal channel for committing God is not your tears. Your tears move God, but they cannot commit him. Your lamentation can move God. The Bible says, for we do not have a high priest who has not been touched with the feelings of our infirmity. But being touched is not the same as responding to it. The only channel that can commit God's integrity to bring him to the scene, to perform on your behalf, is the word of God. I need you to understand this. Not a man of God. He may only be a vehicle. But the principal channel for committing God is the word of God. Whenever we talk about faith, it is simply the vehicle that gives the word of God expression. And I will just charge us a little. It's important for us to know that the word of God can be trusted. The scripture that we read, this Bible, look up please. This Bible that we read, the Bible says it was inspired of the Holy Ghost. Are we together? Holy men wrote it as they were moved by the Spirit. So, regardless of the imperfection of the translators, regardless of the imperfection of the writers, the sovereignty of God still vetoes their imperfection and makes this word capable of producing results. When believed and acted upon, are we together? Your faith. Every time in scripture, Jesus would challenge the faith of the recipients. Jesus never told anyone you have asked a hard thing. It was Elijah who told his son in the gospel you have asked a hard thing. It is possible. But Jesus will only ask them, believers down. Thy faith has given this to you. Let me give you a very interesting definition of faith that I got from Bishop Oedipo. Uh, this, this is one of his most recent definitions and it is absolutely powerful. This is what he said. Faith is sharing responsibilities with God in the light of his word so as to get your desired result. Faith 
is sharing responsibilities with God as defined or in the light of his word so as to get your desired result shared responsibility shared responsibility there is a path to your miracle listen please that depends on God that is exclusively left to his wisdom and power and sovereignty but there is a path to the delivery and the manifestation of your miracle that depends on an operation you must do so many believers want to receive from God listen please we come to God but we approach God as though approaching an idol hoping that he will perform some magic no there are spiritual dynamics to reception your faith your faith your faith your faith we have a series on that and we're going to start that series next week I'm going to be sharing with you some deep dynamics about faith because it's important for us to get results results are predictable say it after me one more time results are predictable there is there is a there is a technology there is a system of predictability to results that's why we're gathered here tonight we're not gathered to some kind of haphazard trial and error I know you will be blessed I know you will be healed it's not pride it's the truth there is a formula for this I know your life will change I know that demon will live your life forever I know you will walk out of here with breakthrough that will bring tears to your eyes but there is a system there is a system please brothers and sisters imagine imagine for one minute that you go to the hospital listen you go to the hospital with your pregnant wife about to give birth and the doctor tells you that look this name doctor is just there oh, let me just confess I'm not exactly sure let's trust God and see what will happen and your wife is crying and saying I'm losing my life how would you love such a doctor and you ask him who gave you that title that you put in front of your name because the title is an implication hmm. are we together the title is an implication the title means you were certified the title means you went through rigorous seasons that trained your mind to be intelligent on that wise now that's when when god names a meeting is an implication if he calls it a miracle service it means he sat down and searched within himself if he had the power to back up that name god never speaks until he looks at himself and finds out whether it is within his ability to back up what he has said if he called it a miracle service then that is a miracle service indeed it has never been about the inability of God to step into people's lives. Please listen. There is no case represented here today that is above and beyond the power of God to step in. No, you'd be lying. Are we together? You know, sometimes the mountains that stand before us, and trust me, I'm human. There are mountains that can stand before people. But you see, that mountain remains only as big as your inability to trust God makes it look there are mountains it says time will fail me to talk of Gideon and Jephthah and Barak men who through faith subdued kingdoms not cities kingdoms so the foundation the foundation please listen the foundation for biblical faith is an encounter with the word of God you must find out what he has said about the issue of concern that is step one to commit him more on that during the faith series but it is important you have no right to lay any claims on anything you have not searched out because God limits himself to the provisions that his word can afford hear me 
whatever the word of God can afford, God can provide it. Did you hear me? Whatever the word of God can afford, God can pay for it. Hmm. Whatever the word of God can afford, it is within the sovereign power of God to pay for it. Your first assignment is to find out. I've been barren for eight years. They said I have no fallopian tube. Thank you doctors but they are practicing. And you come to the word of God. And check. And then the Bible says your marriage shall be a blessing. It says your children, not even a child, surround your table. Now the next thing is whose report will you believe? Are we together? The trouble is, we do not meditate on the word to a point of restful persuasion. Restful persuasion. But I know whom I have believed. And I am persuaded. You don't read the Bible like a novel. No, the entrance of your word. Eventually, as you pay attention to the word, let me tell you, I know what I'm saying. Believe me. When you study scripture with all your heart, an activity of the Holy Ghost begins to happen from those letters through your eyes into your spirit. From those letters through your eyes, through your ears into your spirit. It says, so then faith comes by hearing and understanding by the word of God. It's not just hearing. It's not just seeing. When you discover the promises, the prophecies, the provision, your next assignment is to meditate upon the word to get to a point of restful persuasion. Persuasion that says, if I perish, I perish, but I found it. I found my bailout. I found it. Oh, they say I must uh, this and that and that and that. I cannot have a child. I've tried. I've been having miscarriages. Oh, men of God have prayed for me. They are not herbalists. Get to the word. Get to the word. Father, this is your word. I commit you. Prophet Isaiah in chapter 38, moved by the Holy Ghost, went to Hezekiah and said, put your house in order. You will not recover from this sickness. Isaiah was a major prophet. When a major man of God with a track record speaks to you, it's almost like a done deal. But a man used the word of God to change prophecy. Ah, the words you speak turn things. Help me. That the word of God can veto any prophecy, any enchantment, any pronouncement. Yes, they said it, but I change it. Yes, they said everybody in my family is SS, but I found a provision. There is a bailout mystery. I can't die AS. I can't die SS. It is within my power to change it. Let me tell you, there is nobody that prophesies a nonsense destiny to me. I have worked with God enough to know that the keys are in the hands of a man. Hezekiah turned his face and said, Oh God, remember my sacrifices. Is it not your word that, 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 that says how that they that give, you know, paraphrasing, that he will remember you in the day of trouble and remember your sacrifice. I have given to your house. Why should I die like a chicken? No assumption. You must bring your strong reasons no assumption you assume you will die like a chicken you must bring your your strong reason don't say even god knows as i hear you say as i hear you say many believers want things to happen let me tell you something faith is hard work are you hearing what i'm saying You've got to find it and sit down until the word of God superimposes your doubt. I know there is a rent of 500,000 to pay. 
The rent is not in the spirit. The landlord is alive. I know. I know statistics says that there are no jobs in Nigeria. I know there is recession in Nigeria. But when you find it in the word. Now listen. When you find it in the word. And meditate. Let me tell you what meditation does. Here's how you know you are finished meditating. You are finished meditating the moment you discover your role. When you discover the part you have to play. You have finished your meditation. You meditate until you find it. Good master. What shall I do to inherit eternal life? Not will you give me. What is my part? Good master. What is my part? Lord, what is my part to be healed? Oh God, will you heal me? That's wrong prayer. That's immature spiritual communication. What is my role? It is within your power. Good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus didn't say, no, 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 no. Eternal life is cheap. No. As cheap as salvation is, there is still a role you have to play. Are we together? It says the word is nigh thee in thy heart and in thy mouth. Even the word of faith which we preach, right? That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. Romans chapter 10 from verse 8 to 10. He says, and believe with thy heart that God raised him from the dead. He said, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart, he says, man believes unto righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made unto soteria, salvation. Not just new birth, unto health, unto everything. Hallelujah. Your meditation has not finished. If you cannot leave that place knowing you're part of the deal. There must be your commitment. Oh Lord, what is the secret to end circles of failure? It's like as soon as I'm recovering from one, I'm finding another. And then you search in God's word. Who suffered like me? What is the key? Lord, nothing is working in my life. No job, no marriage, no money, no peace. What should I do? Oh, there are enemies in my life. How do I deal with them? I've prayed. And then the Holy Ghost takes you to Psalms 149. Let the high praise of God be in their lips. And a double-edged sword in their hands. To execute vengeance upon their nobles and to bind their kings with the fetters of iron. To execute upon them the judgment that is written. It says this honor has all the saints. Ah, so my praise is a weapon of warfare. This is my own part. You shut your door. And you begin to praise God like a madman. And when you praise God like a madman, all of a sudden, you put pressure on his integrity the moment you act. Let me tell you. God is not committed to delivering any promise in your life if you have not acted upon it. Having the readiness to judge all disobedience when your obedience is complete. Praise the Lord. So what is your part tonight? Number one, your part is to believe God. Your part is to believe God. Don't allow science, medicine, the intellect to bring you to a point where you now start calculating and say, okay, now let's be real. I know that I have a fibroid. I touched it and I felt it. Is it really going to disappear? And you now begin to think. The question you have to think is, how did it come? Were you born with it? Did you swallow it and it went there? So how did it come? You never question how it grew to be that big. But now you are questioning how it will, be shrink, how it will shrink and disappear. We have been trained in an environment that stimulates unbelief. You mean I can complete that house by the end of the year? Haba, this is October. We've not even gotten to Lintel level. The last person who would have blessed me just said, Guy, Nigeria is hot. Hot for who? Don't, don't generalize this thing. Let's be sincere enough. Persuasion. I believe God. Oh. I believe God. That's why we're ministering. Listen, when you find what God has said, commit him. Throw away your ego. 
throw away your fears and commit God. The Bible says, listen, listen to what it says. It says, in my name, they shall cast out devils. That's what we are going to do shortly. He said it. We believe it. And so we have the effrontery to gather you and to release a platform for the world to listen. And we give them an assurance based on what? Based on his integrity. That's why we have a worship team. What's the assignment? To create the atmosphere for his presence to make manifest. Because when his presence is here, then we know that we have committed him. Brothers and sisters, I want you to come to a point of restful assurance. Throw away that doubt. You know, some of you hear what I'm saying. And most people, when they hear preachers talking like this, they look at their dressing, they look at everything and say, it's not your fault. It's because you are enjoying. As if the person was born like that. Apostle, it's because you don't know the fire that drove me from home to come here. Believe me. I don't care what it is if God cannot solve your problem then we have found a reason for him to not be God but I believe God previous miracle services it did not happen another word for faith is persistence another word for faith is persistence you will never never stop persisting and claim you have faith no sir Elijah prayed and asked his servant, go and check. He said, there's nothing. He would have said, ah, God, I called down fire once. What is this one? Is it that I'm backsliding? He didn't even have time to ask that question. Restful assurance. He went back to pray. Seven times. And he saw the cloud like the feast of a man. And he told Ahab, he said, saddle your ass and run. I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. There are people here tonight trusting God for miracles in your body. There are people here who do not even know what is wrong with their situation. You are welcome. Who else will you run to? Let me just say something. When I was, when I was meditating and preparing this little exhortation, the Lord said the following things to me and I just want us to write it down. Just three of them quickly. Number one, your action commits my integrity your action not your conviction your action your action at the point of action that's when my integrity is committed so you can believe and not see results faith is the name given to the action you take based on your conviction faith is not the conviction the conviction leads to faith faith is the action are we together yeah so i look at pastor femi for instance come femi i look at pastor femi for instance and let's assume he's trusting god to heal him maybe of chest pain look at this now he comes out and hands are laid on him and he just looks and he's angry at the next person because he's saying you did allow them lay hands very well it's not the it's not how much hands are laid on you. You see, somehow we have this understanding. You can say, I have chest pain. And just a touch and then they go and, and you are wondering, ah, ah. you would have stayed and touched and gone around and done this. Now your mind thinks because time is being spent on you. It means God is saying something. No, no. The miracle, listen. The miracle is in your faith. It happens at the speed of faith. It happens at the speed of faith. This guy can have all kinds of tumors and just a touch. In fact, sometimes it may not even be a touch. Just your faith. Like there are people now already who are healed. They don't know. It's just because you can't go to the hospital. It says, and as they spake, as Peter spake these words unto them, the Holy Ghost fell on all day that had him. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are we together? It's your faith. Don't come here and be careless and just sit down. No. Assuming there's somebody you brought here, for instance, who, was, who is deaf, maybe on one ear or both ears, and now it's time to pray 
and as we are praying and you are just standing you are watching the person oh in the name of Jesus if there is any dead person here be healed and you look at him and you are wondering ah, this guy let me concentrate on myself that guy will never be healed he's going to go out like that because number one you are embarrassed to take an action step because you don't want to put your hands in his ears and inform him and say they are about to pray I'll check you your ego is telling you guy don't do this if you put your hands on his ears and you pray and you check him if it doesn't happen you will turn with your shame and hold him there that's exactly why the person will walk back and not be healed are we together they mention is a case and it looks like an embarrassing case you've been healed go and check yourself and you're wondering you are sitting down there and wasting your time and then you run later after service and you come and say, Jimmy, sorry, oh, don't be embarrassed. Do you know that when you were mentioning somebody with pile, it's me, oh, I, I, you saw me, Abby? Just quickly pray for me. You are joking because you see, the result is waiting for action immediately. Please get this thing. The Lord told me this that I should tell us. Your action commits my integrity. As they went, he said, go and show yourself to the priest. As they went, as they went, as they went. The woman said to herself with the issue of blood, if I may but touch the hem of his garment. Do you know if she just stopped there talking with herself, she would have gone back home with her issue of blood. But then after speaking, she still pressed. At the point she did it, there was a miracle. Number two, this is the second thing God told me and I don't want to believe this applies to koinonia. Let me be wrong at least. But I don't want to believe this applies to koinonia. But I believe this applies to other people. This is what God told me. Stop mixing God and any other God like traditional gods, native doctors. That's why I say I don't believe this applies to koinonia. But I think that this is the unbecoming of the church in Africa. On Sunday, you are with God. Are we together? On Monday or Tuesday, you now quickly run to your village. And they tell you there's somebody. The guy is not exactly a herbalist. He's not exactly a pastor. He just has this gift. You cannot mix. Let me tell you something God has said. Give us Psalm 16. Psalm 16 verse 4. Give us verse 4. Psalm 16 verse 4. I want you to read the A part. One to read. Their sorrows shall be multiplied. That do what? That hasten after another God. That's what I was looking for. What will happen to them? Their sorrow. It will look, let me tell you. Please hear me. I've never gone to a herbalist. But I've ministered to plenty of people who have gone to them. You will never get a sustainable result from a herbalist. But it's my father that said we should go as a family. Well, I know that there is a limit to which you can control that. But I'm telling you, you can insist and refuse. The Bible says there are sorrows. I know what I'm saying. In Africa, many people will say, oh, these people, they are just young people. They don't know what they are saying. The Bible says their sorrows shall be multiplied. That do what? That hasten after another God. So you have something he tells you to put in your pocket before you sleep. I don't care whether they ask you to read Psalm 1 or read Psalm 100. For as long as there is a genie and a charm in your pocket and you put all kinds of things and you have to get up, do something demonic, the man is telling you, go and buy a goat. Are we together? You buy a goat, they slaughter it, they turn the blood and they say it's done. Just be praying. Just because he said just be praying does not mean it was of God. Amen. I have discovered, let me tell you something. I have discovered that most people run to God as a last resort. You go to a doctor. If a doctor does not work, then maybe you go to a few men of God here and there. After they all jump and gyrate and nothing happens, somebody will just tell you, sorry, I wanted to advise you, but 
you know, I don't want you to think I'm a bad person. But if you are serious, I can take you somewhere. You see yourself going to Zaria City. I said, don't be afraid though. That's how the man's face is. That, run away. Run. That's how it is. You go there. The, before any discussion, you are dropping consultancy fee. You know, I've told you here, Koinonia, hear me. Money and miracles don't go hand in hand. Bring money. Let me pray for you. You can sow a seed expecting a miracle. You can be challenged to commit yourself. But where somebody says, the price for this pregnancy is 25000 And I'm just doing it for you and your wife. If you ever get pregnant, it was the mercy of God. Remember when the gentleman saw the apostle with the power to lay hands on the sick and he offered money. What did he tell him? He said, your money perish with you for you think you will buy the gift of God. It's not for sale. It's priceless. So stop mixing God and witch doctors. You cannot mix God and witch doctor. Are we together? If you depend on God, depend on him. If you depend on a herbalist, depend on him. But don't mix them. You know, one time I was counseling a very dear, a dear lady who, now this is by no means being sarcastic on any family. But I was counseling a lady who told me that she went somewhere and they gave her razor to eat. Razor. And to her shock, it didn't injure her. Razor, like sharp razor, you bring out gillet, razor, and now open your mouth, throw it in. She was scared to death, but I tell you, she broke that thing, finished it, and swallowed it. No sign of blood. They are mediums, right? They are mediums. I can guarantee you that lady's life will never be the same from that day. Now, the challenge with these kind of people is they just come and say, ah, now, I will never be involved in those kind of things again. Lord, my hands are washed. They think that's all to it. They think they are free. So, somebody says, I want to get married to you. Two weeks, he says, I don't know what is wrong, but the day I said I will get married to you, somebody warned me and said, if I catch you near my wife again. So, the person gets up and says, I don't want trouble. And before you know it, the lady is 40, 41, no marriage. She loves God. She's serious. Are we together now? But she believes that everything is all. No, it's not just like that. Though. That's why God puts meetings like this to set people free. I don't know what your challenge is tonight. But I want you to know that the God of all flesh is in this place. Tonight will be a night the Lord spoke to me and I said it to us that it will be a night of massive freedom and deliverance. There are, there are people, honestly, who are going to stay on this thing and force some spirits to get out of the lives of people. I learned early in life that spirits are behind the sufferings of people. Never confuse physical conditions with the influences of spirits. They may manifest as different things. But I give you a guarantee there are spirits behind them. You are not just being hated for nothing. You are only one out of seven billion people. What makes people hate you? Everywhere you go, they hate you. There is a spirit. It says, for as a body without a spirit is dead. There must be a spiritual cause for that physical problem. And tonight, in the name of Jesus Christ, whatever will not let you go must leave you. There are people carrying all kinds of plagues of bad luck and disfavor. Hear me as I'm speaking to you. Do you know it's not everybody you see suffering that is lazy or bad or unserious. There are well-meaning people. But these powers just sit on your destiny and say we will not go. Because it does not take discussion. It takes the power of God to put them where they belong. Are we together? 
there are some of us who have never experienced the favor of God. You have had it in the lives of people. You have clapped for other people, but you've not seen it in your life. If your uncle or your father or your mother is not there to help you, you think you are finished. Because in your mind, every time you are praying and say, God, visit me, what you mean is, please, oh God, help Ejimi to be the one to visit me. But when that favor is on your life and those demons clear off the way, you'll be surprised. Hear people saying three jobs. Three jobs. Waiting for someone at this time. Now the question I want to ask you before we pray is you came with a challenge but do you believe? Do you believe that God can give you a testimony? That's my first question. No, 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 no. Don't answer me. Do you believe? Please, don't, 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 don't just assume you know what I'm saying. I'm speaking from my heart. You're seated outside. You're seated in the overflow. You are following online. Maybe in another nation or in another place. Do you believe that God can step in? That's number one. Number two, do you believe that God can step in now? It's one thing to believe God will step in. But do you believe God can step in now? Or are you saying, oh God, my eyes cannot see well. But even if it's one that starts seeing, I'm grateful. You see, it looks like his faith, but it's not faith. It's just an advanced form of unbelief. Lord, I hold on to you. I don't know what you will do with me tonight, but I believe you. And every instruction that comes, I believe. Are we together? When prayers, when we're about to pray and we tell you every spirit that is disturbing anybody, you don't just stand and, and you are waiting for somebody to be shouting and falling or you are waiting for yourself to fall. No. Your heart is open. You are praying. Time to release your prayer request. You don't just tell the ushers, let me drop my own and you drop it as if it's... No. You are dropping it and waving it goodbye. And saying I dropped it because you will never return to me. Listen, there is an attitude. The miracle is in the attitude. Not just in the act, the attitude. Lord, as I drop this request, I wave you goodbye. I cannot drop it and write it again next year. Next, next, next month. Are we together? You are coming here trusting God for an impartation and an anointing. You don't sit down carelessly. You are listening carefully. As the word of God is coming, your spirit is open. And that you believe that by the time the grace is shared, I'm walking out of here a different person. Are we together? You came here sick. Oh God, this sickness. I've been praying about it, but today, let me tell you, do you know you can decide the day of your miracle? Mm -hmm. The woman with the issue of blood said today, Jacob held on to the angel, right? And said, I won't let you go. He would have let him go and say, okay, the next time you come, just inform me. You can make it today. When I was praying for this meeting, I said, God, I have one request. Please, let everyone that comes here believing return with a testimony. That was my prayer for you. I've done my own part and the grace... The grace to produce the miracle you need by the grace of God is available. The mercy of God is here to help you. Your part is to believe God enough and respond in faith. Are we together? Every part of the meeting, God is going to do a quick work right now. But I want you to believe. Please be tired of where you are. Oh God, from January till now, I've not moved forward. I have to be sincere with myself. Give me an encounter that by now, between now and October miracle service, let me return with tears of joy in my eyes. There are two kinds of tears a man can cry. Tears of sorrow and tears of joy. It says you have turned my mourning into dancing. Everything I'm telling you to do is what I'm doing myself. Don't think I just came here empty handed. I came here with my heart full of expectation. I mentioned my own request before God and cried my heart to him. So I, I'm only a vessel, but I'm also a benefactor. Because by and large, I will still listen to this message and I will receive every prophetic word. The trouble with us is you may think I'm a worker. Oh, I'm, I'm protocol, I'm media, I am a minister, I am this and not receive. 
you see how the leaders in this house whenever they are here they forget about anything and everybody's heart is open that's that's the attitude are we together don't sit down arguing and say madam how are you how do you feel that's not your business focus on what god is doing and insist the devil in these kinds of meetings hear me satan waits strategically for those whose hearts will not listen to the word they are the kinds who will go back and their situations will be worse than it is because you see when these demons and these spirits leave they have to search for a life for continuity and you can't stand neutral there are others who come here there are probably people sitting inside and outside you were invited but your heart is already here cynical will god really bless them all these men of god serve and all this their nonsense talk you see that kind of attitude will not give you a miracle don't come to god passively you must come to him intentionally are we together how many of us are ready to walk out of here with a real miracle how many of us believe there is a place in the word of god for your case you believe your case is not new there is a place for the word of god how many of you believe that it is within the power of god to wipe your tears and give you a testimony and how many of you are ready to place a demand by faith please jump up on your feet and begin to pray rise up on your feet and begin to pray lord i place a demand lord i place a demand lord i place a demand whether you are inside outside i place a demand online i place a demand on your integrity i place a demand on your favor i place a demand on your wisdom i place a demand are you praying Shake it back at Abarata Katadi Bata. Shem Proto Sobari Kata. Lord, I've been doing ministry with no anointing. I've been struggling in ministry. But I place a demand that I will encounter something, an unction, a grace that will change my life. Lord, my business has refused to grow. Everything I've tried to do is not working. But tonight, I place a demand. Lord, I'm tired of this genotype issue. I'm tired of this genotype issue. Lord, I'm tired of this barrenness issue. I'm tired of high blood pressure. I'm tired of pile. I'm tired of eye problem. I'm tired of using crutches. I'm tired of poverty. Living from hand to mouth. I'm tired of failure, tired of defeat. Change my story. Change my story. Change my story. Hallelujah. Listen. Hallelujah. I want you to take two minutes. You are going to cry for your family and say, Lord, as I stand here, I represent an altar. It's not just me alone. The angel of your presence must enter my house tonight. Lift your voice and pray. Pray, pray, pray. Oh God of heaven, step into my family. Step into my family. End that cause. And that bondage, the plague of death in my family, bring it to an end. The plague of hardship, nobody has a job in my family. End it, oh God. Nobody is gainfully employed. Nobody is born again aside from me. Step in, oh God. Step in, oh God. Nobody. 
God is making progress. People are just getting old. Nothing is moving. Change my story. The words you speak complete the Listen, listen, the last prayer point. He said, give us this day, this day, not tomorrow. Lord, give me this day breakthrough. Give me this day promotion. Mention everything you want and say, Lord, today, my faith is for today. If your faith says yes, God will not say no. If your faith says yes, God will not say no. Lift your voice and cry. Give me this day healing for my body. Give me this day a new anointing. Give me this day an encounter with the spirit of wisdom. Give me this day direction for the next level of my life. Hallelujah. 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 The Lord is giving me one more prayer point. Don't be tired of praying. Prayer helps you release your faith. Listen. Hold on, please. Listen. Amen. Listen. I want you to pray with all your heart. I told you there are spirits behind every situation. Hear me. I want you to pray in one minute that any spirit behind your seat, leave the situation alone. Don't worry. Don't mention, leave the headache. Leave what? That the spirit behind it. I like you to pray and declare that as God's prophetic word comes from here, that spirit is under arrest is on fire and it must leave. Hey. Lift your voice and pray. Leave the case. Challenge the spirit behind it. Leave the case. Leave the case. Challenge the spirit. The spirit behind failure. The spirit behind delay. Hallelujah. The devil is in trouble tonight. Rise up, everybody. Rise up, everybody. I tell you, I'm angry in my spirit. Rise up, everybody. We have to pray. Somebody has got to walk out with a testimony. Somebody has got to walk out of this place with a testimony. Somebody has got to walk out of this place with a testimony. Somebody has got to walk out of this place. 
Bring them out. Somebody has got to walk out of this place with a testimony. It must be over today. 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 It must be over. There is enough grace, brothers and sisters, to step into your situation. Lift your hands, everyone. Lift your hands, everyone. There is authority in this place, not just power. There is a difference between power and authority. There is authority in this place. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Sabarato kapari kete bashala bakaria da badada. Shepherd de kete berete kos. The Lord is asking me to pray in tongues for two minutes. Hear me. And while I pray in tongues, me, while I pray in tongues, I want you to bring all those under the anointing. That's what the Lord is asking me to do. Father, let your word go forth. I put the word of God on my prayer. Shabakata lakatebash. Embrekata katabarakata. Shebarete sedada debakata. Lekata prekatebash. Dekarata tesh. Dekarata tesh. Dekarata tesh. Shabaradaba. Inside, outside. Lekata prekatebash. The word of God is upon this prayer. Repekete kete 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 in broka barata baba ba la kata barata kata shakata tata akata tata akata tata rakato shobara tototo reke ke kata they are tongues of fire they are tongues of fire in bros ke kata kato shobe meke te e kote seke te te reke te Lift your hands, everyone. Lift your hands. I tell you, fire is burning in this place. You must be free. You must be free. You must be free. Just lift your hands. Lift your hands. Right now, in the name of Jesus, every spirit, every covenant, every altar, standing on your way, to the next level in the name of Jesus right now I command them to leave you 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 now every spirit holding your destiny every spirit holding your destiny Every spirit holding your destiny, leave them now in the name of Jesus. Lift your hand. At the count of three, I want you to shout, Jesus. I'm seeing a sword in the spirit, and on that sword, I see something like a chain. And on the chain is written stagnation. In the name of Jesus, lift your hands. You may not even know this affects you. At the count of three, as you shout Jesus, many of you will be surprised what will happen to you. Inside, outside, online. Let that spirit that has changed your destiny in one place, as you shout Jesus, I command it to leave. Are you ready now? One, two, three. I command stagnation. Go now. Go now. Apoto shekete. Go now. Go now. Stagnation. By the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Stagnation. Leave your 
your destiny. Stagnation leads your life. Stagnation. Hallelujah. I'm speaking to someone right now whose life has refused to move forward. I don't know who you are, but every time you want to make progress, you have dreams, and in those dreams, you see things holding you. Sometimes you see chain. The Lord is asking me to release you wherever you are right now i stretch my hands i set you free i set you free i set you free i set you free hallelujah we are still praying they must let you go ladies lift your hands sisters lift your hands i want to pray for you from my heart something is about to leave you now sisters lift your hands every covenant that anyone is under here please hear me knowingly or unknowingly that has tied any lady's destiny right now ta, 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 ta. in the name of jesus at the count of three may that fire come upon you and burn that covenant to ashes any ungodly alliance any covenant that has tied your destiny are you ready now ladies one two three shout jesus be free be free be free be free, be free. Be free. inside and outside I break it. I break it. I break it. I break it by the power of the Holy Ghost. Lift your hands. Hallelujah. I saw something fly above. And the Lord said, it's the spirit of death. The plague of death. There are families here. Every year, someone must die. Every Every year, somebody must die. There are families here. Every season, somebody must be sick. I want to end cycles. Death does not just mean cessation from living. Cycles of repetition. Lift your hands, everybody. This one will affect a lot of people. Please open your heart. Hear me. Many of you may not have observed that there are cycles of repetition that happen in families. Cycles of repetition. Lift your hands. The ministry of angels. At the count of three, with all your heart, I want you to shout Jesus and watch what happens to you. Some of you, as you shout Jesus, you will have an open vision, literally, and you will see things that have happened in your family. And God will bring you a word of deliverance. Are you ready now? At the count of three, Father, back up your word. One, two, three. Spirit of death, I arrest you. I arrest you. I arrest you. I arrest you. Circles of death. Circles of death. I arrest you. Hallelujah. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Cancel everything. Challenge every spirit. 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 
Hallelujah. 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 We are going to be fast. But I'm going to walk around. There is a reason why I walk around. Listen. You don't have to touch me. But let me tell you. As surely as the God of heaven is in this place. When I come close to you. If there is any spirit that is holding your destiny. It must leave you. Believe me. Believe me. There is an anointing. You don't have to make the place rowdy. I'm going to walk through this road. I will come back here and I will go outside. Let's see how much we can do that very fast. Please, let your heart be open. You don't have to touch me. I'm telling you that any spirit, any spirit, I stretch my hands here. Any spirit, 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 Across you, when there is any spirit, that fire right now, right now, right now, right now, right now. Every spirit, every spirit, every spirit, every spirit, every spirit, every spirit, every spirit. Right now, you must go. 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 Right now. Right now. Every spirit. I doubt anyone of us. You must go. I 
la man de bosa ta perita la 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 cosa ma se che ne ha e che ne ha da e tu che ne hai e tu che ne hai ma ne ha le cosa ta e pa la memoria e pa tu sa e che ne ha la memoria e pa la 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 cosa ne ha of you outside sorry about the sound i'm about to walk here listen you don't have to touch me i assure you by the god of heaven by the anointing of the holy ghost right now right now be free i'm passing your role the anointing is upon you the glory is upon you the glory is upon you the glory is upon you be free now be free now As I pass you God is touching you. God is touching you. God is touching you. Hallelujah. Now there's someone here hold on please. Hold on please. There is someone in this vicinity. You had a dream 3 days ago and you saw me praying for you. 3 days ago exactly 3 days ago. Who is that person? Came here the spirit of the Lord told me to pray for the person. Please who is that person? Let's pray. And then the sec don't don't come here please if you are not the person. The second person I want to pray for. There is someone here you've been having severe abdominal pain right here. Right here. You are a lady. This pain has been too much. Right here. Please who is that person? I want to pray for you right now. You are the okay. Stand here. I want to pray for you right now. You came for a miracle service. Lift your hands. I use them as a point of contact to pray for everybody here. Anyone here with any strange pain? Ah, look at. I look at this lady and I see a spirit. Go! In the name of Jesus Christ, I command that pain to leave right now. Go. Right now in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is showing me someone. I don't know what it is about this row, but there is someone your family has gone through repeated cycles of losses. This is financial losses. For a while, I don't need to bring you. God is going to bring you out right now. Lord, whoever that person is right now, that's the person I'm talking about. A miracle comes for you. A miracle comes for you. I'm seeing a lady here. Looks like a small girl. You see spirits in the night. This is like which is This is what I'm seeing. The Lord is bringing deliverance for that person right now. Right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord is bringing a miracle for that person right now. Right now. Right now who is by the name John? There's someone outside here ministering to those outside by the name John. 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 Who is John, please? Are you John? Your name is John. Ah, there's another John. You are wearing Nigerian shirt. John, you are wearing Nigerian shirt. Is there someone like that? Do I know you? Stand here. I need to pray for you because I'm seeing something on your head like madness. Can we have this? Okay, thank you. Those outside, listen. In the realm of the spirit, whether you are inside or outside, believe me when I tell you this, it makes no difference. The only thing we have to lose, you can see I'm talking outside, but I'm still touching people inside. That's the same I can be inside touching you. Don't don't think because you are standing far, I have a disadvantage of sound, but that's the only disadvantage. It's not a disadvantage to your spirit. Are we together? Look at me. Where are you coming from? From Quara State. Quara State. For this meeting? 
No, I'm, I'm a student in ABU. Oh, you're a student in ABU. I'm, I have to pray for you. I'm seeing somebody reading, and all of a sudden, he starts talking like a madman just from academics. And this thing I'm seeing is witchcraft. I hear what I'm saying. I, don't be afraid. I'm not a prophet of doom. I'm going to pray for you. I don't know who is trying to protect anything while you are studying here. But in the name of the God of heaven, please hear me. Because while you are studying, somebody else is hoping you don't pass. But I lay my hands on this gentleman. I use him as a point of contact to anyone here. Whoever has planned anything against you, it returns back to them. In the name of Jesus Christ. All of you in this overflow, this very one, please lift your hand. Sorry again about the sound, but I want you, don't mind, just lift your hands. The Lord is telling me in seven days, please hear me. There are five people here in this room. In seven days, God is going to give their families dramatic breakthrough. Listen. I will not touch you. The power of God will locate them right now. One. That's one. Five of them. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. You don't have to bring them out. Seven days. I stand under this prophetic and apostolic voice. And I declare miracles. 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 Bring this little girl for me. Bring this little girl for me. Come, sweetheart. Let her not fall here. Hug me. Come. The Lord is saying, I don't know what family this girl comes from, but the Lord is saying he's giving that family favor right now. Favor for this girl's family. Favor for this girl's family. Favor for this girl's family. I'm seeing... A final year student here you've written your exams you thought you've graduated but i'm looking now and i'm seeing two courses and the lord is saying we should change it i don't know who that person is here this i stand in the name of jesus the son of the living god and i prophesy as the lord has spoken to me we change it now we change it now help them we change it now I want you to believe everything God is doing here. Believe everything God is doing. I'm looking at a family of seven people, no marriage. And God is saying, arrest that spirit. I'm seeing another family of four ladies, no marriage. I don't care who. Wait, you don't have to come. Father, I pray. I'm standing here. It doesn't matter where I stand. I'm speaking to everybody. Right now, in the next one minute all those whose family has been tied down maritally fire is coming upon those spirits right now right now right now in the name of jesus be free be free be free completely free be completely free be completely free the lord is showing me something i'm looking at this woman and i am seeing your children i know she may not i i, I don't know if she understands him or not but I'm looking at her and the Lord is saying I should wait with her. When it's time to go in, I should carry her and meet her two children inside. That's what God is telling me. That I should carry her. Someone ask her. Uh, Evelyn. 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 And who? Okay, they are inside. Evelyn and Mercy. Hold on. Because I looked at this woman and the Lord is saying he wants to visit the woman. And then the Lord told me that two of her children are inside. That when I'm going in, I should hold her and take her inside and minister to that family. I use this woman as a point of contact. You keep hearing me pray and repeating myself. It's because there are spirits that don't want to let people go. They must go tonight. Gentlemen, look at me. Look at me. Tap guy. It's your season of breakthrough. I know that you hear a word like this and think I'm joking until you hear the testimony. It's your season of breakthrough. In the name of Jesus Christ. Mommy, let me talk to you. Please come. The Lord is saying I should tell you. You hear Hausa, ma? You can speak English. No, no. I need to tell you what I'm saying in Hausa. Yes. That he's going to wipe 
in such a way that you will forget the pain of the past. I don't know who you came with, but I'm prophesying to you. Mama, go and write it. This thing will happen. You will come back with a testimony. See, when a prophetic word comes on you, I want you to know that the end has come. There, there are thousands of people here. If God locates you, don't, don't sit down. You are doubting. Is it really God? No, 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 no. Mama, for your children, where are they? Come. Did you tell me? Because, uh -uh. Mama, let me talk to you. I'm prophesying. I need to pray for this person because I am seeing God doing a miracle for him. This gentleman. Uh, where is he? Abuja. He's in Abuja. Yes. What's he doing? He's working for somebody. And they are not even Mama, let me talk to you. That's why I'm talking to you. You see this person? Go and tell him by November a job is coming for him. I will not stand in the open. You are in Zaria here. So it's not like somebody, they ship somebody to come and stage manage. I'm saying it in the open. Go and tell him. My brother, I want to pray for you. There's delay in life. Come and stand here. Someone will look at you and think everything is all right. But if I don't pray for you, a time will come, you will be really frustrated. There's a photographer here that things are not working for. Where are you? God wants to change your story. I don't know if you're a photographer or something. Please, you see, I told us let's cooperate. I want us to finish very fast. There is a photographer here. I'm not guessing. You are here. Things are grounded. Who are you? Make sure you are not lying. Not country. You photographer business. Huh? Somewhere at Northgate. At Northgate. And nothing is happening. Do you love God? I have to pray for you. Because I'm looking at somebody who stood. You had a quarrel with somebody over snapshot and the lady cost you. This is what I'm seeing. That lady you see, uh, well, I'm not, I, I, it's not like I'm indicting people, but that lady you see, it's not everybody you see that is a normal human being. That lady cost you from that day. Things will dry up. You have, it's, it's not like you are careless, but if it takes a person to speak a word of a curse, it takes a higher anointing to help you. Hold my hands. Return back to your glory. I prophesy to you right now. In the name of Jesus. My brother, let me pray for you. Jesus is truly the answer. You see, let me tell you, brothers and sisters, you can be suffering for decades, but when God decides to step in, that's the end of it. He just helps you. Praise the Lord. When he steps in, I'm hearing Joss. Joss. You came from Joss. You came from Joss. You came from Joss. You came from Joss. The Lord wants to give that person a miracle. You came from Joss. Please, if that person is here, let me. Who? Ah, this is Mama again. We've prayed for Mama now. Oh, from Joss. I'm going to pray. Ah, ah, no, now. I will pray for her, but. No, I'm not saying your state of origin. You came from there. Not that you came from. I know, Sarah, I'll pray for you, but there's somebody else I'm seeing. Who is that? Sir, you're welcome. You came from Joe, sir. Are you a family? You too, you came. That is, sir. You came from Joss. Where in Joss? I'm with the University of Joss. You're with the University of Joss. I, I have to pray for you. I'm looking at you and I'm seeing a man who has been cheated. This is what I've seen in the realm of the spirit. Sir, you came all the way from Joss, University of Joss. You're a lecturer? You're a lecturer with University of Joss. Why am I seeing you not promoted? Well, I changed from I was lecturer to the university. The system is not I'm, I'm, I'm going to pray for you because the Lord is saying I should prophesy to you that he's stepping into your life and he's giving you a miracle. Don't waste your time, sir. Ah, I'm seeing you writing like, I don't know if it's a, this is like a, uh, like a publication. This is what I'm seeing. This is a publication and a prof, a prof is going to help you. And God is going to honor you with that publication. No, there are many publications to write. But you will return back. This will happen like a dream. The way God is going to wipe your tears. Praise the Lord. Yes, please. I'm sick. 
Leukemia. Don't worry, Daddy. I'm going to pray for you. We've not prayed for the sick yet. Are, are, we, are we together? I'm going to pray. When it's time to pray for the sick, I'll lay hands on you. Yes, sir. I'm seeing there's a corruption in your blood. And God has to cleanse you completely. Yes, so that you will not die. Don't be afraid of death and be thinking I will die and leave my family. Ah, uh ah. -uh. God is still alive. He's the same God who was there for you. Hallelujah. Sir, just this prophetic word for you that God is going to lift you. I'll come back to you when I'm praying for the sick. We're going to pray for the sick now. My dear, hold my hands. I'm seeing you climb a ladder, Sarah, and the Lord is saying it's time for you to stay on that ladder. You climb up and it brings you down. You climb up and it brings you down. You climb up and it brings you down. And the Lord is saying, let her climb and not come down. Therefore, I lay my hands on you and I prophesy that it's a new season. In the name of Jesus. There are two ladies inside the main auditorium. The power of God is coming upon them right now. The power of God is coming upon them right now. They are inside. The Holy Ghost is, a, is, a, is like a volcano. It's like an anointing. Two of them inside. The Spirit of the Lord is coming upon them heavily. This is breakthrough that God is bringing. Sir, you wanted to talk to me. Don't worry. You don't have to tell me what the issue is. You understand? If we say that, you see, we will not be able to attend to other people. And it will not be fair. Do we all agree? So, I must not mention your case. Just believe me. Please have the faith that God is going to touch you. I came out like this to encourage us. So that you don't feel I am there. It doesn't matter where you stand. Just for coming to this ground alone, the power of God is there to touch you. Augusta, come, let me for you. This in you come. Kai, I have to pray for you. I'm seeing the spirit of death. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Who brought this guy? Can I, Gina? Can you hear? Me? I have to pray for you. This is the spirit of death on you. And the Lord is saying, I should set you free. Huh? In the name of Jesus Christ. I lay my hands upon you and I command that spirit of death to leave you and go forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. Father, I lay my hands on this gentleman. Be free right now. In the name of Jesus. Hold my hands, darling. I, I, is it your sister? Why are you here? You came from Joss too. Where in Joss? To the water. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Jesus! Where is the mama that was here? Uh -uh, there was another woman who was standing here. Please bring her. Be careful with this, our elderly ones, please. Come. Let's walk yeah. Lift your voice and begin to say, Lord, I believe you. Lord, I believe you. Lord, I believe you. Who is this? Who brought you? What's the situation? The Father is inside. We are going to pray for the sick now. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. I'm seeing charm against a family. And the Lord is saying, let it end now. I don't know where that family is. That charm, that charm. I curse it right now by the God of heaven. I curse it right now by the God of heaven. I curse it right now by the God of heaven. I curse it right now by the God of heaven. I curse it right now by the God of heaven. Hallelujah. Mama, where are your children? Where are the children of this woman? The Lord gave me a word for them. You should have been ready now. Are they here? Please, so that we move to the next thing. I want us to finish here on time. 
I want us to finish here on time. Are they here? Where is her sister? Under the anointing. Hold on. Please, I'll just minister to her. We don't have time. Mommy, hold my hands. I look at you, mama, and I'm saying, just leave the children to play. That's all right. If they shout, those ones are children. Let them play. They are receiving something as they are all playing, I'm telling you. Praise the Lord. Lift your hands. You. Out of him, now. Mama, I lay my hands on you. In the name of the Lord Jesus. What do you want God to do for you? Sir, I want God to give me a child. To give you what? A child. A child? Yes, sir. My God. Your child? I am I'm baroness. Mm. Mm. Ah. My God. 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 Mama, how many years? Ah, uh, I cannot say, sir. Go ahead. How many years? There's a reason I'm asking you. Ah, uh, it's long. Can you remember? Since I was born, I have never given birth. Uh, Since you were born, yes, you are sir. married. Yes, sir. You've not given birth. How many years have you been married? Uh, like 20, 25. 25 years. I prophesy to someone here from the depth of my heart in the name of the God who sent me I say it I prophesy from this woman has touched the core of my spirit in the name that is above all names I place a demand on my office not my fate my office not my fate my office not my fate and I pray in the name of Jesus, anyone under any cause, whoever placed that cause must die. I say it again, whoever placed any cause, whoever placed any cause, I command the ground to open and swallow that person. I say it again, whoever placed any cause, Against anyone, shake it, take 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 it, Mama, where is your husband? He's not here. 25 years. You will think, me, I thought that what, this was one of her children. Mama, lay your hands on your stomach. Where is your husband? Not here, sir. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm not asking you whether you have faith. Look at me. Look at my eyes. If you believe I am sent from God, in the name that is above all names, carry your child. Carry your child. Carry your child. Carry your child. Go and return with a testimony. Mama, hold my hands. I take away sickness from your body. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for two of you. Hold your hands. Please lift it. Let's hurry up. As I lay my hands on both of you, the grace for supernatural favor, I release it upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want us to hurry up. Please bring out your prayer request. Pass them to the ushers. While you are doing that, all those who are trusting God for healing. Now is your time. Please come out quickly. I want us to be very, very fast. Don't injure the ones who are already here. It's going to be very, very fast. Now all those outside, listen. 
those in the second and third overflow bring that girl those in the second and the third overflow that means the overflow by the roadside they can come in but those in this first overflow please stand outside those in this first overflow you can go outside so that will save time so that will save time let me pray for these people promise come uh, benga come kenny come um michael come where's pastor femi come i'll lay hands on you people you go and lay hands on those outside please make sure that the people are healed we are not playing games this is not just formality please come out bring the lady out release her now in the name of jesus i command you spirit it's time for you to go right now in the name of jesus amen let me pray for these gentlemen when i pray for them they are going to go outside don't look at them look at the anointing that is upon them in the name of jesus that grace the anointing that grace that grace that anointing that grace that anointing that grace that anointing please you go just pray for the people outside and jimmy please come you join me we'll pray for those here now listen we are going to be very fast please if we don't ask you what is wrong with you you don't have to say it now let me do something please if you are elderly here make your way to the front please if you are elderly make your way to the front our mothers our fathers so that i can just lay my hands on them and then they can go back please i please, some of you that are coming are not elderly please go back if you are elderly elderly is very clear if you are elderly we know elderly means you have a grown-up child please please let's save ourselves any embarrassment hallelujah worship team you will lead us through a series of powerful worship now if there are your loved ones who have not sent their request please let them do it very fast because i want us to pray here now make sure you drop your request everyone under the sound of my voice father i pray for these ones as i pray for you i don't know what the situation is but i'm placing a demand by the god of heaven inside and outside that there will be miracles in the name of jesus christ amen and amen heal the sick oh god and let there be miracles in the name of jesus christ mama please hold my hands in the name of jesus you're the god of wonders amazing god you're the god of miracles amazing As I pray for you, go back god to your you're the god of wonders amazing Out. god Be you're sweet the now. god of I miracles your destiny. I amazing god say you're the god of wonders Amazing God, you're the God of miracles. Amazing God, you're the God of wonder. In the name of Jesus. Amazing In. God, you're the God of miracles. Amazing, you're the God, say, you're the God of wonder. Yes, as they pray for you, just go back and Amazing check yourself. We don't have the time for testimonies. You're now. the God of miracles. Amazing, you are God, you're the God of wonder. Amazing God, you're the God of miracles. Amazing, you are God, you're the God of wonder. Amazing God, you're the God of miracles. Amazing, you are God, say, you're the God of wonder.
the God, you are the God, and you are the God, you are the God. Hey, amazing God, I said you are the God. You're amazing. You are amazing. I say you are amazing. You are amazing, God. You are amazing. You are amazing. You are amazing. You are amazing. I say you are amazing. Lord, you are amazing. You are amazing. Lord, you are amazing. Your name is Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh. Hey, you are the miracle working God. Your 
name is Yahweh. I say your name is Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh. Hey, you are the miracle working God. Your name is Yahweh. I say your name is Yahweh. God, your name is Yahweh. You're the God of wonders, amazing God. You're the God of miracles, amazing God. You're the God of wonders, amazing God. You're the God of miracles, amazing God. You're the God of wonders, amazing God. Amazing, amazing. that hates knowledge is a generation that will be slaves i repeat a generation that hates knowledge has sold themselves already into slavery praise the name of the lord the body of spiritual truth that is allocated for the victory of the saints the bible generically calls them mysteries matthew chapter 13 and verse 11 jesus teaching he said it has been given unto us to know the mysteries a mystery is a hidden code of operation it's a body of spiritual truth that is privy to a group of people are we together now yes they are called mysteries because largely speaking those who have not encountered the lord jesus christ may not understand them because of the character and the operation the way they work for instance if you're not born again when you hear truths like there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth there is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty that does not make sense because in the economic system of the world it is by accumulation that you build but the kingdom does not exactly work that way are we together for instance in the kingdom our words have prophetic implications that they are shapers of our reality let the redeemed of the lord the bible said say so not wish so so we don't just wish things in this kingdom that we our speaking is part of the creative system of our destiny but for an unbeliever when you say say so it doesn't make sense but in this kingdom we speak because even our god is a talking spirit he speaks so they are called mysteries 
when we build believers and open up these mysteries by the spirit then we bring believers into this exact body of truth the bible calls it marvelous light on account of that truth that you now have that you now hold you can walk in dominion dominion is the resultant effect of your comprehending the mysteries of the kingdom and can i tell you the mysteries of the kingdom are not infinite it's a finite body of knowledge you can hold and one of them is the mysteries of prayer prayer is powerful believers pray but largely we shadow box we just dissipate a lot of spiritual energy based on how we saw those who led us pray so we just follow and pray there is so much dissipation of spiritual energy but then there's very little result for a long time i thought that you learned how to pray just by praying until i found out that jesus did not just tell the disciples pray 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 he taught them to pray are we together so we began to consider part one please you can do well go online get the first part so that you follow um we're going to examine for this night very briefly matthew chapter 6 this is jesus this is one of his mentorship sessions i love jesus did you know that all through the three and a half years of jesus we never really hear him talking about anointing and empowerment look at how he made mighty men he focused on teaching them it took just one encounter to bring the holy ghost and power but it took three years to change their thinking empowerment is not so difficult the problem is when the oil comes on a small container the container will make the oil look small so before the arrival of the oil go and borrow vessels borrow not a few expand your capacity so that when the oil comes it will meet a container that is large enough and when there was no more vessel the oil stopped flowing matthew chapter 6 please love your bible and let's be students of scripture in the name of jesus spiritual laziness is out of our lives we must obtain grace let us place value on the word of god not for the purpose of getting a sermon to preach this is for our growth and for enlightenment are we together all right so jesus when you read the account of luke you will discover that when jesus was done praying we discussed it last week um luke's account is one of the synoptics and he the disciples said teach us to pray they noticed that there was something about the way Jesus prayed versus the result that came. The disciples were not talking about backsliding. The issue was not prayerlessness. The issue was inaccuracy in prayer. There was something about their prayer that did not produce results. But they noticed that the prayer of the Son of the Living God, the Messiah, their mentor, produced tremendous results. Like James told us, he said the fervent and effectual prayer of the righteous he says that it makes uh how, how does he put it now i've much so jesus is teaching and how many of you know that when jesus is teaching you pay attention matthew chapter 6. please give it to us theologically speaking we call it the lord's prayer i don't know if it, this really is the lord's prayer this is this is just the lord's lecture on prayer the real Lord's prayer is in verse chapter 17. John 17. That's when Jesus prayed. He lifted his eyes to heaven and prayed. But you, if you are in the seminary here, you don't write what I told you for your exams. You will, you will fail for no reason. Praise the name of the Lord. Okay, so Matthew chapter 6, please. Now, Jesus is saying, look up. After this manner, pray ye. Wow. He did not say repeat what I'm about to say after this manner means I am building a spiritual pattern to prayer that I want you to follow he's showing us the protocol of prayer that works the prayer that prevails are we together now until this time he said a lot of things that I don't want to go into 
when Jesus began to discuss the issue of prayer go to verse let's start from verse 5 Jesus is teaching on prayer and his first point of call is hypocrisy amazing <laughs> Jesus is teaching when thou prayest thou shall not be as the hypocrites what in the world is the relationship between prayer and hypocrisy he's teaching who are the hypocrites they love to pray standing in the synagogues the bible says and in the corners of the street that they may be seen of men so the hypocrisy is the motivation behind that energy that is dissipated that even though it looks like there is a lot of prayer but the goal is that men will see that when you approach prayer he's teaching here resist the temptation of trying to sign a spiritual register in the presence of people there are many people today whose prayer life is already down but based on your assessment you will think it's up there because every time they see you they have not they have not resisted this temptation this is africa and there is a lot of treasure that we place on people who pray which is wonderful but i'm telling you that many people intrinsically they do not have the passion nor the revelation of prayer but when we are before people the temptation is to dissipate spiritual energy provided there's somebody looking at you because of the assessment they will take back about you and jesus is teaching on prayer he's saying resist that temptation prayer is more than a desire to let men see that you're spiritual that they may be seen of men verily i say unto you they have their reward what is their reward the perception that you have mog so you pray that's their reward oh what a poor reward for such a sacrifice are you learning now jesus is teaching us prayer now he's not saying people should not see you but he's saying primarily your motive should never be to try to use spirituality to attract some sort of respect there are people who claim to pray and they are sleeping the moment they hear a knock on the door and you open they now act like they are praying you go back and say you mean three hours you've been here they have their reward their reward is the perception that you live with but there is no energy being dissipated in the spirit when the school of prayer next verse please help us this is a study it says but when thou prayest enter into your closet and when you have shut the door pray to your father now look at this he is not saying just the idea is not pray alone you have to understand what jesus is saying here the idea is not refusing you from praying in public uh -uh. he's saying that the construct of your mindset when you pray should be that your focus should be on God. Enter into your closet. Are we together now? It's not just a literal statement to mean every time you want to pray, run into your closet. No. He's saying whether you are in the midst of people or you are alone, the moment is time for prayer. Let nothing around you distract you. Let your focus be on God. Please keep that scripture there. He says, pray to your father which is in secret. And your father which seeth in secret shall reward you openly. Verse 7. When you pray, next warning. So we are addressing hypocrisy. And we are addressing focusing on men. Now he's talking about vain repetitions. Now let me correct this because I know that there are people following from all over the world. Vain repetition here as the heathen do. I love Jesus there are repetitions that are very proper but there are repetitions called vain repetitions for you to understand this you have to understand the ancient religions they had chants that they used. some of them were occultic are we together now and there are some religions in the world that still practice it they can chant a word or a phrase sometimes 5,000 times you understand what I'm saying this is what Jesus is saying that when we approach the father to pray we should not use vain repetitions as the hidden do for they think they shall be heard for their mouth speaking 
He's not saying you should not talk. He's not saying you should not repeat prayer points. A lot of people have misunderstood this scripture. And every time they ask God for something, they feel guilty for asking again. The Bible says Jesus prayed three times using the same words. The same words. Verse 8. Be not therefore like them, for your heavenly Father knoweth the things that ye have need of. Now, this is a very powerful information, but it's also very fearful. God, why should I then pray, since you know the things that I need? Jesus is speaking and he said nothing about your request is a shock to the father. He's omniscient, all-knowing. But why do you have to pray? There are many reasons. Maybe the last session will deal with that. But one of the reasons why we have to pray is because God gave man a will. There are seven things God gave man, not a spiritual man, man as the zenith of his creation that stands us out from all other creations. One of it is the will. The day God gave man a will, it became scripturally incorrect for God to veto on man's will and make assumptions without the man making petition and demand. Are we together? Even at the expense of your eternal destiny, God does not impact eternal life by force on you. As merciful and as loving as he is if you do not verbalize and make a declaration of your need for Jesus he will respect your will until you go to hell that's how powerful God's honor for the will of man is so believing that God will arbitrarily just come into your life and over your situation without beckoning on him may leave you in shock and leave you in disappointment there are people going to hell today and in spite of the reality of the finished work of Christ, the substitutionary sacrifice, he still respects their will. He met blind Bartimio on the way to Jericho and he says, what should I do for you? What do you think a blind man will want? Don't say the opening of eyes. What if he wanted money? In the book of Acts, remember the guy who was crippled? He did not want to be healed. He was asking for arms. Not everyone in trouble wants to come out. Oh, I have learned this in ministry. Not everyone down wants to go up. You have to honor and respect the will of people. If they want to remain where they are, you leave them honorably there. Trying to feed a man who is not hungry may put you in trouble. So God allows you to verbalize your desire, your desperation, and he responds to it. Now, let's discuss prayer. 6 verse 9. He says, After this manner, therefore, pray ye. Koinonia, listen. Let's discuss prayer now. Pattern number one. Our Father. Everybody please say it. Our Father. Our Father. He's teaching us to pray. That every time you are about to pray, the first consciousness in your heart should be the fatherhood of God you are not praying to an archangel you are not praying to some deity somewhere even though God is the God of the universe he's the ancient of days El Gibor etc but when you approach God in prayer the name should be Abba father you know what father means source from the word Abba it means my source it means my sustainer it means my defender carry this mindset when you pray that the person you are praying to even though he is the god of the universe he is my father god of wonders beyond our galaxy you are holy Holy God of wonders beyond our galaxy That God that created the heavens and the earth Is my father Romans chapter 8 and verse 15 please 
the consciousness of the fatherhood of god media let's work together romans 8 15 the bible says for we have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear but we have received the spirit of adoption whereby we who are in christ we now have a right to call him abba father my source i'm not coming to someone who i'm hoping wants to bless me i'm coming to someone who is obsessed about defending my interest i came from him he's saying this mindset must govern your approach to prayer if you come as though you are meeting a stranger you are submitting a cv before someone whose intent you don't know it is important you know that god is interested in you Matthew chapter 7 and verse 11. Please, let's hurry up. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 11. Now, look up, please. Jesus is contrasting earthly fatherhood. He's speaking about fatherhood now. If ye then, being evil, fathers now, know how to give good gifts. My goodness, my God. Look at this. You know what Jesus is saying? He's saying, men, even though you people are sinners, the sin nature is actively at work in you. Yet, as powerful as the sin nature is, it could not kill away the compassion of a father. As, as evil as you are, terrorists still take care of their children. Is that true? As evil as they are, their children still return home. Daddy, how are you? An armed brother just returned from killing another person. Yet, he can kiss his child. That's how powerful fatherhood is. When you say Abba Father, you understand this. A terrorist can kill any other person, but he will not kill his children. As cruel as he is, he still has compassion enough to know. So the Bible says when you approach God, realize like a child, you are coming to a responsible father. And here the Bible gives us the classic sign of fatherhood fatherhood is not the ability to give birth to children the real proof of fatherhood is your ease to give your ease to release that you are not just a father because you have biological children in god's mind if you are truly a father he measures your fatherhood by your ability to give so when i say my father i'm coming to the one who has made me a receiver because he's a giver this should be your construct we are discussing prayer here. Prayer that prevails. Abba Father. I'm coming to him. And I'm coming with certainty. God is a giver. He will not withhold any good thing from me. I'm not hoping and wondering. I'm not thinking of which angel will help me lobby him. No. Father. Keep that scripture there please. It says, if ye then be evil, know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more shall your father which is in heaven give good things to them that want it? Look at your Bible. To them that... Fathers don't just give good things to those who... From glory even to glory. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. He loves you enough to respect you. If you don't have not because he has not look at me do you know how many things we would have cheaply received in our lives only if we had the grace to ask many years ago a gentleman i noticed he was always uneasy around me i think he wanted to ask for something i don't know if it was a shoe or some money and truthfully speaking one day i told him i said why are you always like this he used to help me just clean the house around and then he stood stood wondering and eventually he told me something he wanted to do and he needed some money and it was not just much when he told me that thing i felt sad do you know why i felt sad i felt that i have been too nice to this boy and taking him as a son too much for him to be in such fear to ask me in his presence i had given to strangers in his presence I had done that's how God feels insulted when you leave him and go to a herbalist and he's watching you he's saying is what who taught you about my fatherhood 
whoever taught you that if you come to me I cannot help you who mentored you to not know that I am a giver you see the reason why serving other gods touch him because he believes that he has he has brought rain on both the godly and ungodly he has done too many things for those outside the kingdom enough to convince you every responsible father here if your child sees you giving hundred thousand to your security will you give him hundred thousand he knows he's worth more than that to you he can have an idea of what you will receive from what he sees you giving outsiders so to know how much god can give me i look at unbelievers and say what did he give them he gave them mercy he gave them rain now we are talking of a family affair so i come to him abba someone shout abba When you come to him know that he's your source he wants to know that he's not plan a when you call him abba you verbalize your total dependence on him lord i'm not coming to you as plan a that i'm trying there is one horn or one 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 javelin that was given to me by one um one native doctor to hang and watch in case you fail me i quickly use it to save myself from embarrassment let me tell you this do you know why god seems to show up for people at their last point that's when they've given up on all the options there is an attribute of god that is unless it is taught it looks like a very negative attribute it's called his jealousy have you read that god is a jealous god now jealousy is not a negative attribute in fact it is jealousy do you know that the foundation for responsibility is jealousy <laughs> you cannot be responsible over something you are not jealous about parents you have a child now the moment you hear the cry of your child it is your jealousy that provokes you to want to say what is that so when the bible says god is a jealous god there is something in you that is connected to him when he hears your cry he can't pretend that it is not you he knows the sound Abba, my father when you approach god in prayer let him be your source your everything not plan b not to drop a bible you drop a charm a talisman and say i'm praying to a universal deity i don't insult your convictions there are people following from all over the world in as much as i respect your spiritual orientation this is a platform that advocates jesus so let me have the confidence to do it unashamedly you will not listen listen to me you cannot mix jesus and a charm jesus and something in your pocket Jesus no wherefore God had so highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every other name do you believe what I'm saying so let me advise you I know that this is Africa and I don't mean to insult your pedigree I think believers we have to get to a point where we must be willing to take God seriously by folding other gods that we have a God that you carry is that powerful enough Many people have gone into traditional worship simply because 
the advocacy of prayer that had been proposed hitherto failed them. So don't be hard on anybody you know who is practicing Christianity and tradition. We are not here condemning. We are helping people to see that it's not necessary when you know God as Abba. Hallelujah. I look around and I see a few little children, our young ones just scattered in the congregation. And I can almost discern the extent of confidence you see those little kids. You'd come as an usher or as a protocol to bully them. They came to church with the consciousness that they are under the defense of their father. They don't care who you are, what department, that is your business and those organizing it. As far as they are concerned, my confidence, the only trouble in their life is when their fathers or their parents get up and want to walk away. That should be your true fear. If your father is not there, it is worth being afraid of. That's why Jesus rebuked them. He said, what is the fear? You are looking at the storm. Am I not in the boat? If the boat will capsize, will it throw you and leave only me? If they kept quiet, we would have read something else today. We would have read a boat that was elevating in the midst of the storm. They stopped us from seeing another dimension of God. They downgraded his power through their own belief. Let's hurry up. Abba, Father. Number two. The second revelation about prayer. Please keep that scripture. Matthew chapter 6. We're still discussing verse 9. Matthew 6 verse 9 please. Media help us. Verse 9. Abba, Father second revelation which art in heaven look up please this means that every time you approach god your faith must be alive are we together now because he is in a domain and a realm that is higher than this three-dimensional sphere so you will need faith which art in heaven even though he's everywhere but heaven is his throne the earth is his footstool that means it will require faith the one you are communicating with is so real yet he's not visible to the optical eyes it will require faith to strengthen your conviction that even though you are talking he's listening to you what a god his feet his legs are in the earth the bible says the earth is his footstool and yet you talk whether in a whisper or in a shout he still hears which art in heaven hebrews chapter 11 when you read verse 6 hebrews 11 it says but without faith it is impossible to please god look up believers why for he that cometh to god must come with this conviction that he is that means he exists don't come hoping is he really alive jesus is alive forever he's alive amen remember that song he's alive he's alive jesus is alive forever he's alive Your situation to say where is the God can you see him just because to build a job a relationship many of you have friends you have never seen yet you are so close to them you can feel the impulses of their emotions why are you feeling bad today and he tells you I have a bad day yet you've never seen him they that worship him was worship him in spirit and in truth please someone say he's alive that means when you approach God in prayer, remember which art in heaven. He's in heaven yet he's with you. So we say he's here. An unbeliever looks at this and says, how stupid a statement. He's here? Where? Where is his chair? That's the carnal man. It's a mystery. How could he be seated on the throne 
seated in my heart and still in the room. What sort of a God is that? Anywhere there is a throne, he sits there. There is a throne in heaven. There is a throne in my heart. When we build him a throne in this place, he sits. If your home builds him a throne, he sits. Anywhere he finds a throne, that means he's crowned king. He will come to honor you. Could that be why he's not found in your home? You have built yourself thrones, but you have not built him a throne. He shall reign. He shall reign. He shall reign forevermore. Crown him king of kings. Crown him Lord of Lords. Listen. Which art in heaven means you will require faith all the time. Without faith, there are things you cannot believe. Without faith, you cannot receive. Remember the scripture I taught you, Mark 11 verse 24. What things soever ye desire, it says, when ye pray, believe that thou receivest it and thou shalt have them you can never have what you have not received receiving is a spiritual thing i received that miracle i received that job and you are laughing as if you have it genuinely and unbelievers look at you they keep mocking till they start celebrating next instruction to help us with prayer hallowed let's hurry up it says hallowed be your name verse 9 please keep verse 9 first samuel chapter 2 and then 30 hallowed be your name hallowed be your name means in spite of his fatherhood you must approach him with the spirit of reverence please look up the revelation of the fatherhood of god can so affect us it can get to a point in our lives where we trivialize him like many people have so he reminds you that even though you approach him with confidence you must approach him from a standpoint of reverence it's called Yirat Adonai the fear of the Lord it's not enough to believe in God you must revere him please give us that scripture Samuel it says wherefore the Lord God of Israel said I said indeed that my house and the house of my father should walk before me forever. But now the Lord said, be it far from me. For them that honor me, look up believers, I will honor. And they that despise me, I will lightly esteem. That means not take them seriously. You must approach God with honor. This is where the balance, and, and I say this with every sense of respect. Pentecostals and Charismatics have made a big mistake and a mess of the revelation of things like the grace of God and the fatherhood of God. Because in a bid to instill confidence in people to approach God, sometimes if we are not careful, we erode away the healthy reverence to have for God. And God has a way of bringing you back to order. When you dishonor him too much, he has a way of doing something spectacular in your life that will reduce you back to say, God, I fear you. He says, now that you are back, let's continue the way it used to be. Have you seen fathers remind their children and say, hey, hey, it's all right. You are jumping on me, but remember, this man you are jumping on is also CEO. He's not just your father. I've allowed you to climb my neck is enough. You can climb my neck and play. You can climb my neck and do whatever. But by the time you bring spoon and say, let's eat together, and it becomes a habit, then the father says, no, this is daddy's cup. This is daddy's spoon. The child leaves feeling bad, but the father is happy because that is a balance. Otherwise, it will graduate to dishonor. One day, he will do what the mother is doing. The mother is playing with her husband and the child will come and slap the father too. So he reminds you he did not marry you. See the balance. This is God. There is a weakness in men. Every time great men are too available, the temptation for dishonor is around the corner. So there is always a way. It's a weakness in men. Is the reason why even sociologically speaking, most great men sometimes intentionally 
just create that difficulty to approach them as a way of reminding you that they did not get there by mistake. When they give you access and they study your sense of honor or dishonor, when they find out that the closer you are coming to them, the more your dishonor is dropping, they peg you there and you don't move forward from there. Maybe this is a lesson for someone to learn. That may be why a door that was once opened closed against you. Because great people gave you unusual access and the revelation of their fatherhood was there but you missed the reverence part. It's a combination of lion and lamb. God is not only lamb, he is lion. You don't play with a lion, you can play with a lamb. Because you see, a lamb that later becomes a sheep does not have horns. It can't hurt you. It will only depend on the safety of the shepherd. But the lion will tear you into pieces. God is both. He is both depending on who you are. Let me tell you this. There are sights of God that are very fearful. Never miss the reverence part. There are times that I return maybe from a crusade or from a meeting and I see the wonder working power of God and sometimes I go down on my knees and I say God Almighty I not only believe you I fear you maybe God is speaking to someone who has been trivializing God you walk to him casually I am the righteousness of God in Christ. I didn't ask you to die for me. You died for me. Now listen carefully. Here are my prayer requests. We call it confidence. Number one, I'm tired of this pay scale. Raise me up. Two, I am this. And we blackmail him. And then we wrap everything up. Uh, I expect between now and the next two weeks. If you are really God. Please listen. I'm not being sarcastic. Never allow your reverence for God to erode. No matter how close you get to God or greatness, do not ever forget that greatness still remains greatness. Please, this is a word of caution. Leaders, maybe this is why many great people do not invite you to their tables again. They have seen that you do not know how to manage the system of greatness. No matter how God, even if God comes to jump around, you know, once in a while you see him warning his disciples because they got too used to him. And say, hey, before your father Abraham, I am for that information. Don't you think you are just two years older than me, Peter? Ah, I know they killed all my age mates from two years and below. Don't you ever think we're age mates before your father Abraham was. When he resurrected in John 21, he said, little children, have you any catch? They were used to him by now. None of them said, ah, God, you are, he's the ancient of days. <laughs> that means you should never be ashamed of going down on your knees. You should never be ashamed of rolling before him. He deserves it. It is not, you are not, you are not, you're not ignoring the fact that you're his righteousness you're not even ignoring your oneness you are balancing the revelation of his fatherhood you are letting him know that no matter how free you are with me oh god you are still the god of the universe there are young people here let me give you a counsel this may be the reason why many great people in your life don't pay attention to you again they gave you access that not even their senior executives have and you trivialize it oh i can call that man's number let me put it on loudspeaker you will see the man loves me so much when they discern that you do not know how to protect and preserve access they will withdraw it are we learning something this night hallowed be your name Boldness, according to Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 16, should not be mistaken for pride 
and dishonor. Hebrews 4 and verse 16 says to come boldly before the throne of grace to obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Boldness is coming knowing that every sin and everything that can stand as a blockade has been gone. Why? Through the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus, his son. Now he has become a new one, a living way. He's given me access to the Father now. I come without a sense like Kenyon would define righteousness as the ability to stand in the Father's presence without a sense of guilt, inferiority, nor condemnation. Yet, in the midst of it, that reverence will still be there. Even in heaven, they still bow. Yes, sir. Even in the throne room, they still bow. You don't find anybody just running around the throne room and say, it's my father's house. There is still order. Satan is not there. Yet, there is still order. Hallowed be your name. Next verse, verse 10. 6 verse 10. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Please look up. I can spend the whole night, even if this were a vigil, discussing this one scripture. This is Jesus teaching us on prayer. Let's do a quick recap. He says, when you pray, this should be your understanding. That you are praying to the Father. You will require faith because it's in a realm that is not earthly. Are we together? That you must approach him with the spirit of reverence. And then your priority, as far as the manifestation, is not just your need. Pray that his kingdom comes. You know what his kingdom is? The kingdom of God. Look up, please. The kingdom of God represents the life, the culture of heaven. It talks about the sovereign rule of heaven finding expression. That you pray that his kingdom would come. How? By his will being done. So his kingdom only comes where his will is being done. Wow. Do you know what God's will is? I wish above all things. The Spirit of God speaking through the Apostle that ye prosper and be in health even as your soul prospereth. That's the will of God. It is not his will that any man perish but that all come into repentance. Let me tell you this. Please look up. If the will of God is really done in your life, you may not have a prayer request again. Are you seeing what he's teaching you? He's saying that even though I will answer your request, the reason why you still have prayer requests is because the kingdom has not truly come and his will is not yet done that if the will of god is allowed to be enforced you would not have any request again so more than the prayer requests that seem to multiply by the day pray that his influence through his will find expression in your life if the kingdom comes your life must be a replica of heaven question did you ever see any angel making a request in heaven did you ever see any four and twenty elder making a request in heaven did you ever see any of the living creatures all that happens in heaven is worship do you know why because the kingdom has found expression so if the kingdom comes to your house you will not even need to say god what about this issue of school fees the kingdom of god is not just some cloud the kingdom of God is God's will and God's intent in its entirety finding expression in your life. Someone say your kingdom come. Hello him Adonai, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. It's a prayer. Hello him Adonai, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Elohim Adonai, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Elohim Adonai, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Imagine what happens to Nigeria if his kingdom comes and his will is done. Imagine what happens in Africa if his kingdom comes and his will is done. Imagine what happens to your political career, to your business. Listen, let me tell you this. When the kingdom of God comes upon your business, don't think you'll be praying in tongues around. You will see heaven in a way that will bring everyone to say, what is this? 
when the kingdom of God came and met a man inside a den of lions not even the lions could hurt him that's kingdom come when the kingdom of God came upon Samaria through the prophecy of one man the Bible says in 24 hours by this time tomorrow and four lepers were the instruments that were used do not trivialize you know most times when we say the kingdom come we just think evangelism soul winning no kingdom come is more than just soul winning kingdom come is the reality the the full span of the sphere the intense the culture the desire of the king being superimposed in a life listen to what it says it says matthew chapter 6 please give us verse 10 it says your kingdom come your will be done in earth not on earth in earth and like you've heard me say the first earth is you you are that earthen vessel so let the kingdom come in my life let the kingdom come in my business let the kingdom come in my destiny let the kingdom come in my church when you pray your kingdom come by your will being done it's a very powerful thing look at me brothers and sisters we have subliminally been taught that the will of god is always to our destruction you know most people hate saying thy will be done because they suspect that if you ever give god a chance his will will so frustrate you so when we say your will be done especially for something that we already have our own plans lord i don't know if it's your will to collect this job that cbn is just giving me but your will be done when your mind is saying god if you try it if you play with me i just got a job in cbn i'm saying your will be done so people will hear it but you too you know listen his will is what made heaven heaven if you doubt what his will can do look at heaven heaven is what happens when the will of god is not resisted I repeat heaven is what happens when his will is not resisted thy kingdom come your priority should be his kingdom when his kingdom comes drugs violence arm robbery corruption all of these things will fade away remember the bible talks about a new heaven and a new earth the old one folding like a carpet that's what happens when his kingdom comes let me tell you something if you're having problem in your workplace your company you don't just need good leaders you don't just need intelligent people what you may need truthfully speaking is his kingdom to come kingdom come is not just for the advantage of christians alone you are saying heaven and its reality let it find expression there is no recession in heaven there is no up today and down tomorrow in heaven a description of heaven is what proverbs i think chapter 4 and verse 18 i hope i'm right he says but the path of the just is as a shining light it says shining ever brighter more and more there is no better yesterday reject that thing over your life your yesterday should never be better than your tomorrow reject that kind of life that that plateaus and then you start plunging down that is the that is a a dangerous heritage that africa tries to propose to us that you rise to a point whether in ministry whether in life and they say it's your time afterwards fade away i reject it the bible says the path of the just 30 years after now we're still shining listen it is unto you according to what you believe next scripture Matthew chapter 6 we're still walking it am I wasting your time give us this day <laughs> our daily bread someone shout God is a giver, is a giver. one more time say God is a giver, is a giver. say my bread, is daily. my bread is daily oh Nigerians prophesy say my bread is daily you have shown me your monthly bread 
you have shown me your quarterly bread as an investor let me see your daily bread because the prayer says the nature of god's giving is that it resets after every 24 hours have you believed that my god is father and father is giver i have prioritized your kingdom give us this day give us this day give this family this day any man that cannot provide for his family the bible says he has denied the faith are we bible students and he's worse than an infidel so if it is true that we handed over this home to god where is our bread for today someone you need to take your eyes away from your company from the government i'm not a politician but in africa and all over the world we blame everything on those in power we blame everything on those members of parliament anything that goes wrong both the one that is our responsibility and the one that is not our responsibility there are things only god can do give us this day ah, like a child will run and say mommy i'm hungry and the mother is proud to be mother follow me she says let's get to the kitchen and let me see. you will see what i've done and there are options what do you want there's this there's that there's that and the child is proud of such a you know these adverts that they show you see this blue band adverts or whatever have you seen that kind of thing and you see the children even though they are acting you look at it and you're just salivating and you you walk you walk to a shop or a mall and you're ready to buy the same thing Do you believe, listen to me, do you believe God is a giver? Yes. Do you believe he can bless you daily? Yes. Now please, I'm not promoting irresponsibility. We are very responsible people. And when we teach, we teach from a balanced perspective. Because if you just teach believers to just wait for God, another way, if you don't balance it, you will produce irresponsible citizens. This is what has made many young people to not be productive they will not get jobs they sit down and live in superstitious realities that keep punishing them and their wives and their children this is not what i'm advocating i am saying that as a believer in addition to all you do there is an advantage by reason of your being grafted into christ that it provides you a platform aside you can hold your salary and you can hold god's provision you will know the difference believe me Let me speak to you in the name of honesty. How many of you know that based on the current African salary scale, if you are to build an enviable destiny, many, many jobs, as far as this country and Africa is concerned, not to insult and demean government or entrepreneurs, they are doing their best, but by the scale of salary, you will not be able to do much in your lifetime. Please believe it early. You want to do ministry. Many of you here are pastors. My dear co-laborers in the kingdom. You will not be able to do ministry. And if all you are depending on entirely. Respectfully speaking. It's just the givings and what comes from the bowls, offerings. You know that sooner or later. There will be grievous tears that's a risk a big risk when i approach god i know that he's a giver and let me tell you how god gives <laughs> luke chapter 6 and verse 38 please don't forget this for the rest of your life give the bible says and it shall be given unto you Here's how God gives. Ready? Read with me. Good measure. Uh-huh. Press down. Shaken together. And running over. Shall. Hold on. So the way God gives. Is that he goes around the earth. And he looks for men. That he coordinates to your life. That's how God gives. And can I tell you something? Are you aware that the population of men is increasing on earth? That may be bad for the climate, but it's good for your giving. 
because that means there are enough actors if you refuse to give God can use another person too shall men give he talks to you and you argue it takes one year imagine if God now tells this man and says give give Joshua Selman say a hundred thousand if it takes you one year to obey God wouldn't I suffer God God gave the instruction in January you obeyed December what now happens to me <laughs> So while you are arguing and disobeying, you will find another human. Please, someone believe that God, there are enough men to be used by God to bless you. Listen, when you know this, you stop becoming angry at individuals. Don't put pressure on your uncle. He's only one of 7.2 billion people that are available to be used. Listen. Save yourself the heart attack of blackmailing people and allow and and making people feel bad for being successful we do that a lot in nigeria once somebody rises from a family he's almost he will keep quiet for many years sometimes it's until he's about to die before you know he's that successful because everybody comes and you now say i prayed for you I mean, if you pray this intercession, it's you and God. God is the one who rewards you. But why put pressure on individuals like that? But if you know that God, see, let me tell you, if you believe what I'm teaching you, you can be here in Abuja or anywhere, whereas your answer will come from Israel. Someone will come and say, I don't know you. Ah. The next time someone tells you something, told me, say, aha, the giver is at work. The giver is at work. Moving men. Kali Parus Kadabata moving system. The giver is at work. Please believe what I'm telling you. The giver is at work. Someone wants to shut down my company. The giver. The giver. I approach you. Daily bread. Daily bread. The urgency in this family. One month may not meet us alive. Where is the giver? Government cannot guarantee giving you daily. Your boss cannot guarantee giving you daily. I bring you good news. Abba is sufficient enough to provide for your daily bread. Listen now. Give us this day. When God was going to send me to this city, you know what it means to come to Abuja from Zaria? You are intelligent, think well. If God does not send you, you will not only disgrace yourself, you will be a memorial, you will be a lesson for people. You, you will be a portrait of what disobedience looks like. They will use you in Bible schools to teach people. Parents will use you to caution their children People in politics will use you to warn, to show people how painful it is to disobey God. Hallelujah. But when I sent thee, lackest thou anything? Hear me. I want you to leave tonight's service with a sense of confidence. Look at men as if they owe you. Look at them as if you are wondering. You mean he has not spoken to you yet? I, I expect you to be one of the actors. I don't mean talk to them and harass them. Exodus chapter 3 and 21. Let me finish that part so we move quickly. We have a few minutes and we're done. Exodus 3 21. This is how God gives. Please read it. You're a Christian. Ready? One to read. And I will give these people. Hold on. Who will give? Who will give? God. And I will give. But this is how I will give. 
in the sight of the Egyptians I will give you by placing something on your life called favor listen listen and the character of that favor is that even if you, it is Egyptians I need to use when favor is on you it's like a spell even Egyptians that have oppressed you for 430 years if your favor only works for family members it's not authentic favor please give us that scripture Exodus 3 21 it shall come to pass this is the proof I have given to you that when you go hallelujah you shall not go empty you shall not go empty you shall not go empty I know you lost your wallet but don't kill yourself ah my life is finished how much is there don't kill yourself like that the savior is in your heart a little box with maybe a few dollars or something just fell and you, you are giving yourself heart attack every time you wake up in the morning and you see that there are still men rejoice I'm transferring in you a very powerful mentality it's not a mentality of irresponsibility it's a superior advantage we have in this kingdom man of God let me tell you this don't be writing letters to people and say till now God has not spoken to you don't harass anybody they didn't call you let me tell you something from where hold on please guys from where you are if you dare wake up in the morning and hear the sound of cars moving and see people moving rejoice there are enough men the giver he can play men like chess from heaven you move forward move forward go to him they don't have to know you strangers shall feed your flock is it not in your bible these are my convictions believe me we're not just shouting for nothing if you don't believe what i'm teaching you sooner or later life will so weep you because you will see how limited your platforms are men is how god gives he uses men 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 so he can sit down and speak to you and say this family i'm instructing you that they never beg for bread again listen and you come to that family and say god sent me here how many of you are working in this family well only two of us how many of you are graduates all of us why is that so anyway god has instructed me to come it is god that gives but he uses men take away superstition around giving giving comes through men what god gives you is he gives you the capital that buys money it's called two riches in one of our sessions on finances i hope god will grant us grace to deal with it if all you have is money you are in trouble because there is a realm you get to where everybody around you is rich what then do you have money itself is a product there is what buys it the same way money can buy a bottle of drink there is something that also buy, buys money the name of the capital that buys money is called two riches you are only wealthy when you have two riches someone can dash you money and it will finish but not when you have two riches one of them there are seven of them that god gives men but only one of them i'll share with us tonight is called favor favor is two riches it is the capital that buys money maybe I should add one more should I add one more the second of the two riches is called relationships mm. everything money can buy relationships can pay for too in the multitude of men the Bible says is a king's honor if all you have is just access to financial resources without men you will not do much not everything opens to finances
there are things that only open to the ministry of man the Lord gave the word and great was the company of them that published it are we blessed next verse Matthew 6 media help us Matthew chapter 6 again now I believe verse 11 this is a very serious one preparing to round up and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors now please let me have your attention Jesus gets to a very sensitive part of his prayer he's talking of forgiveness please keep the scripture there for a while forgive us our wrongs or our debts he didn't stop there he says as we forgive those who sin against us some versions who say there are many revelations about this sensitive aspect of prayer and if we do not learn this we may not be able to excel in our prayer lives a few thoughts on this please follow me number one all men are human they fail and they grow weary this is the revelation Jesus is giving forgive us our debts as we also are debtors to others he's planting in his disciples a revelation that you are in the world of men that the best of all men are still men husband wife business partners all kinds of people somewhere in your journey in life you will have to find an occasion where you will need to communicate forgiveness are we together forgive us our debts he would have stopped there but he says there's something i need to let you to know as we ourselves forgive our debtors it's a chain reaction this is the one area where everybody is involved both the one praying those listening he's saying forgive us our debts that means as you live in this world this is not just a prayer issue now it's a revelation live with the consciousness that all men are human let the propensity for forgiveness be ever there in your heart ready to communicate it because you will find many men and the higher you rise the more there will be need to communicate this listen living a life without forgiveness will be a life of sorrow eventually you will find out that you'll be the only one standing the chances that everybody around your life will offend you one day is 100 percent the chances that you will offend everybody around your life is 100 percent regardless your spiritual growth you read about jesus who carried a whip is it in your bible that one day jesus entered the temple he didn't report the rebellious people to the roman government as a nice coordinated citizen would do he carried the whip and took laws in his hands whipped all the people turned the table of the exchangers and was breathing hard and said my house should be called the house of prayer if you were in government ladies and gentlemen and a report reaches you that jesus just, just did something like this what would you do now jesus i love you but why have you tied my hand now that's what happened to king Nebuchadnezzar when they gave it they said no prayer should happen to any god for a period of 30 days daniel went to pray he didn't do wrong but he offended the laws of the land offending people has nothing to do with being evil it's a difference in perspective difference in values you may have an maybe a muslim driver and one day you quickly want to pick something in the bank and you come out and you see the person praying and he acts as if you didn't employ him he doesn't even pay attention to you until he's done with his prayer and you while he's praying you're just thinking and wondering how do i punish this man do i drive him do i jail him and yet he's, he's a very sincere man a man only honoring his conviction forgive us our sins forgiveness is painful that's why jesus took our time to talk forgiveness is an aspect of giving 
I hope you know. Don't give money alone. Forgiveness is giving. You laid aside your majesty, gave up everything for me, suffered at the hands of those you have created. You took all my guilt and shame when you died and rose again. Now today you reign in heaven and now exalted. I really want to worship you, my God. You have won my heart and I am yours. Forever and ever, I will love you. You are the only one who died for me. Save your life to set me free. So I lift my voice to you. Forgiveness is a profound proof of spiritual maturity. You are a businessman, you will need it. You are a leader, you will need it. You are a father, you will need it. How many hired servants, the prodigal son said, does my father have? And I am here sitting with the swine. I may not know many things about my father. I've been with the swine a long time. But there is something I know about him. That he is rich in mercy. Therefore, I will arise. And I will go to my father. And I will say, Father, I have sinned against you and against heaven. I am not worthy to be called your son. Take me as one of your slaves. As soon as the father saw him afar off, the Bible says the father came and embraced him. You are messed up, but you are still my son. Listen to me. Sooner or later in your life, if it's not already happening to you right now, you're going to get to a point in your life where you will need to communicate forgiveness. Cheated in business. Backstabbed politically. Betrayed in ministry. Taken advantage of. This is the world of men Jesus is teaching us. If I ask everybody to come, in, to come and pick this mic and tell us the story behind your resentment for men. Some of you concluded that all men are wicked and evil and devilish. I don't need any man. No. Take it easy. God still uses men. Some of you is preachers you hate. When you see any man on stage, you curse him before you even know him. That's how they stole our money that year. Exactly. And the man can preach just like him. That's, that's exactly. <laughs> Listen to me. My brothers and my sisters, hear me. I bring you the word of the Lord. It is important for you maintain, don't just receive for Yeah. he said I am willing the father is willing to communicate forgiveness but you must have this revelation forever for as long as you are alive can I even tell you something your forgiveness will need to graduate into forbearance let me tell you the difference between forgiveness and forbearance forgiveness happens because of the limitations of men mistakes, limitations, ignorance foolishness forbearance means that that weakness still remains in the person and you have to live with it forever that means it will be repeated again this should be taught have you prayed for your son and you call him and say why are you living like this why are you a bad boy and he says daddy i will never do it again by evening police is calling you e evening not the next day don't feel bad please if you have someone that's why they are here we'll pray for them six o'clock are you the owner of this child yes sir please come to the we are tired. if this boy if he comes here they will jail him and you are standing there say i thought this guy just begged at that point you don't need forgiveness again you need forbearance he's a prodigal son but he's still my son 
something happened and i'm only going to say it because archbishop benson either hosa is gone and then you know years ago this was from duncan williams himself he he said how that i think it was oral robert i don't know who came to ghana and had a meeting and while they were reporting the meeting they made mistakes and they credited some of the churches that belong to bishop duncan williams to Ora robert and when he heard it he said no he just tried to correct them sharply and then when the report got to Ora robert said no 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 why should this guy be doing this and then he called on archbishop benz in his ahosa and said why is your son behaving like this i mean you taught this guy well he should behave well and then bishop Benson Idahosa called him as his son to rebuke him and he said I would not come Duncan Williams in his own words leave me alone I will not come you are not God and he said all right from today you're on your own it didn't take two years everything was pursuing him from government to demons to principalities nature men everything I mean it he got to a point where he prayed he fasted no matter what you do if it's in disobedience you will have to go back to the protocol of god's ordinance you're not going to quietly manipulate god in the secret place when you are living largely no it doesn't work that way the prodigal son can ask for forgiveness while he's with the swine but for restoration he must still meet his father listen carefully and then he now called and it was difficult to now reach Benson Idahosa. His life had been so shattered. He was a shadow of himself. And then he heard that Archbishop Benson Idahosa was in London and he booked a flight quickly. When he got there, he lay down flat on the ground and held his legs and said, no matter what happens, you are still my father. And he said, look what has happened to my life. And he said, Bishop Benson, Idahosa just looked at him. And after a while, took him a deep breath. And here's all he said. Satan, this is the business between me and my son. The legal access you have, it is me he has offended. Leave two of us together. You can now go. You will need to obtain forgiveness many times in your lifetime. You will need to give forgiveness. Listen to me. There are people here who it's as though you would rather die than to forgive your wife or your husband or your children. No. This child wasted my school fees. I, I wasted money paying school fees. I didn't eat well. I paid school fees and look the kind of result he brought. Let me tell you this. One of the most powerful words for me in the Bible is the word again. Again is a powerful word. It's the clearest description of hope. And Adam knew his wife again. The prodigal son again. The Lord is speaking to you here. You're under the sound of my voice. Piling up a list of people. For as long as you pin people down, you too, you will remain down. You cannot rise when you are pinning others down. Apostle, you don't know what they did to me. Apostle, forgive us our trespasses. There are pastors today who hate others, talk about others tear down others I, I don't care whether you are right or wrong it says forgive us as we forgive when it has to do with offense he's saying everybody's in the same basket it's often said that if you point one finger at someone is it two or three now i don't know how many a number of your fingers are pointing back at you that is so true in fact ethically some of you here are HR specialists, you are consultants, and I think there is a conflict management principle that HR people teach. 
that if you want to report someone who is a staff in a company before you say one thing that is wrong against that person you must say three things you like that means if you are coming to meet the hr or the boss before you say this person you are bad or he's a thief if you cannot tell your boss three things about the person that is positive he will send you away he will say complain the day you show me three other things that are good about the person and they found out that it has improved the working relationship of many people within the company because by the time you're researching and finding the things that are good you will just see how minute that issue is and you say i forgive you use it for your company from tomorrow call them and tell them i learned something all of you come together no more complain on this ratio three to one where sin abound much more grace abound so use that as a scriptural backing maintain an allowance for the humanity of men as you live in this world take away the godlike expectation that you have over men leave home i remember one time someone called me I, I i got up i think around maybe two or three i don't do much of sleep in the night and i saw a text that was full of all kinds of things you claim you're a man of god i've been calling you i was so tired i was sleeping you know? this person insulted me and said this i'm calling you to pray if my loved one dies just know you killed my loved one what is this now i only slept they say you pray in the night yes it's true but that day i was tired should i lie i only i slept listen it's good to expect so much but you must have realistic know the difference between realistic and unrealistic expectations are we together there are people today who get angry at politicians i gave you 50 names to give all of them a job you only gave five what kind of person are you he says i've tried my best you are not the only one didn't i vote for you your vote is only one be patient <laughs> what of business people you must have a large heart please listen to me the humanity of men is something you must factor in your heart otherwise you will have heart attack every day of your life every day every day I'm wrapping up let me give you a story when i started ministry i was so passionate about being in the good books of everybody i'm a peace loving person i don't like trouble as you see me like this if it takes me sleeping on the ground here for peace to reign i will do it peacefully and quietly people took advantage of me people will sleep they will wake up stretch themselves and now try to call me if i'm not available they'll say you said god god told you god sent you to us I would feel so blackmailed I was almost I was drained let me tell you how God delivered me I entered a Catholic Church and I looked at the crucifix you know that the cross that they put there and the Holy Spirit said whose face is there this is true for the first time I realized I was not the one who died for the sins of people <laughs> honestly honestly it just occurred to me that you can never truly satisfy everybody's needs the goal is to be sincere and to do your best with the grace that god has given you because the time it takes to appease another is the same time that allows to offend another And you come to my house okay i'm coming ah you went to this house what of my own okay don't worry i will see what i can do i would i would receive over five invitations for the same date and they will forget to contact me and then remind me sometimes the morning of that meeting i hope you are still coming our posters are out and i'm saying god what am i doing now and for some of them the journey there's no airport there and then we're just starting the resources to have the luxury to travel is not even there And you forgive i went to preach somewhere 
when I started out in ministry, it was raining. I went through the rain. Do you know when I got to the church, they didn't keep a seat for me? I was a preacher. <laughs> yes, sir. They were acting drama, laughing around, jumping and playing. I fasted. I prepared a very serious sermon. I came to pray for people with all my heart. And here's what these people are doing. I stood at the door, they put umbrella, and then eventually they had to push some people, please move, move. That's how they got a seat for me. And then they acted drama for over one hour plus. They were laughing. I said, what is going on here? Why did I accept this invitation? I'm not saying drama is wrong. And then when I got up, I had not even raised one song of worship. They just brought a paper and passed it. Sorry, time has gone and you know, security. Uh, can I just maybe 15 minutes or so? I said, Oh no, no, come on, what is this? In the end of it, I still was happy. I said, Lord, I'm not going to allow offense or bitterness destroy and corrupt. Someone came here hungry to receive. Let me tell you this one of the secrets of the anointing is not prayer and fasting, it's love and compassion. It's not enough to just want power. You must have a high level of forbearance. Some of the nastiest people in your life may be some of the most sincere people too. They are just people who do not know how to manage the emotions around their lives. You must obtain grace to forgive. There are some of you who need to forgive. Maybe your house helps. You are already planning that this week you are going to jail them. Take it easy. Take it easy. Give them a chance again when I learned this in ministry it gave me peace there is absolutely nothing that surprises me today in ministry now my heart is prepared for anything anything as I'm here if I hear that the security people in my house have run away with my car I say okay no problem that's all right God thank you it's your own Police, I hand over the case to you. If you find the car, good. If you don't find it, that's all right. Please, I need peace in my life. Make up your mind that you are going to have peace. Let me tell you this. Do you know the highest index for measuring wealth is peace? Not progress. Peace. There are many people today, the names of people is what makes your blood pressure to be running up and down. You want to sleep, you just remember, oh, this senator, oh, this person, oh, this business person. Can you imagine how this person betrayed me? Five billion, gone like that. It's gone. But be patient. God can restore. But it's when you sleep and wake up, he restores. If you die, they bury you. Make up your mind. Great peace have them that trust or love the Lord. He said, in nothing. Listen, make up your mind that you will have peace in your life. Nobody will steal. Your peace is an asset. Don't trade it. Are we together? Peace. I was told of someone who died from April Fool. True story. This thing they do during April. You know, they just come and lies. And, and they said something serious and he died of a heart attack. The person who was joking did not know what to do now. Forgive as you are forgiven. Our time is up. Let me touch on one aspect. Just give me five minutes and we're done. Next, it says, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Now, this is a very powerful scripture. Lead us not into temptation. That means men don't just get tempted, they are led. This is a very powerful information. Temptation does not just come to meet you. There is someone or something that leads you. And he said, Lord, your leadership does not lead men into temptation. Lead us. Please keep the scripture there. Lead us not into temptation. It's the day that armed robbers will come somewhere, a voice will say, go and rest there. 
you are being led you just go and sit down there and get into trouble there are many people who were innocent but because they could not discern they went and fell into trouble you must pray for guidance not everything that looks good is good not every door that is opened is anointed in fact almost all troubles first appear as good lead us not into temptation is a very powerful prayer the guidance the leadership of the holy spirit isaiah chapter 30 you read from verse 21 and 23 please let's hurry up isaiah 30 21 and 23 the bible says isaiah 20 it says isaiah 20 isaiah 30 sorry 30 from verse 21 to 23 please write it down for reference isaiah 30 it says and thine ear shall hear a word behind thee saying this is the way walk ye in it when ye turn to the right hand and when ye turn to the left 22 the bible says oh dear let's just keep 21 go back to 21 I think I should just leave it there. Your ears shall hear a word from behind thee saying, This is the way. Walk ye in it. When you turn to the right and when you turn to the left. In this world that we live in, you need divine direction. To be guided to go away from the place of temptation. There are people who had no business getting into certain kinds of troubles, but they were led there. There are some of our children who had no business joining certain groups, but they were led there. They just got into the midst of people and they said, okay, we are this fraternity, we are these occult groups. There are many people today, the destruction in your life started when you were led to join certain clubs, certain groups. The prayer to lead us not into temptation is a very powerful prayer. Lord, anything that has trouble in the end, save me from getting there lead us that means your will plays a role temptation does not come until there is something in you that resonates with that temptation are we together satan does not tempt you around anything in your life that does not truly desire if you are broke the temptation will be packaged around finances chances are that you will respond to it because you are hungry remember jesus the temptation the first temptation had to do with hunger you are hungry why don't you turn this stone to bread listen don't just pray for your needs alone pray that god will give you the stamina not to fall into temptations that come around your need you may be needing a house in abuja desperately your family members are stranded and satan comes why don't you compromise and you will get one million overnight for a house it's easy to resist temptation when you don't have a need satan is not foolish he will wait till you have a need and the need presses you to the neck then he comes with an offer it's difficult to say no when you have a need lead us not into temptation and then he says deliver us from evil now this one evil you don't have to go there Evil is a, is a living spirit. It moves around looking for men. You know, a man of God, a man of God gave a story, very, very touching story, about a man who tried to board a flight and he was rushing there and for whatever reason, you know, it was close before he got there. The flight lifted. A few minutes later, he would hear from the news, maybe an hour later or so, that the flight crashed. He was saying, wow. Then he went to join a train and the train crashed. That one, and he died in the train. You see, that one, death was looking for him. Death was intentional. If you, if you miss the air, I'm still waiting for you on land. Let me tell you this. Two scriptures, please. Very quickly. Two scriptures. 1 John 5, 19. 1 John 5, 19. Never forget this scripture. 1 John 5, 19. The Bible says we know that we are of God and the whole world, not Abuja, not Nigeria, not Africa, the whole world lieth in wickedness. Every one of us here, 
is a potential victim of wickedness if unassisted by God everyone you don't have to offend anyone just be alive even the dead body of Moses when Moses died was he free Satan still came to carry remember he wanted the dead body when Jesus died was he free they still put people to cover the body what do you do with a dead body they covered it in a tomb and they still put people to protect the body last scripture for tonight second peter chapter 2 and verse 9 second peter chapter 2 and verse 9 i say amen to this before we even read it amen. the lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished the key word or the key phrase is the lord knoweth how to <laughs> god knows a woman knows how to make jollof rice god knows how to deliver you and knows how to push the enemy to the place where he knows that there is a god in heaven god is a deliverer deliver us from evil is a prayer you need to pray sincerely deliver my family from evil deliver my ministry from evil deliver my business from evil This is Jesus teaching us how to pray. That this must be the construction of our approach to prayer. These are the details that must be captured in prayer that prevails. Please listen to me believers who are wrapping up. The Lord is teaching us this because he wants our prayer life to be rich. That when next you go to pray, whether you are praying in the spirit, whether you are praying in understanding, you must approach it with this body of thought, with this mindset. I am coming to my father. I have the faith to approach him. I approach him with the spirit of reverence. My priority is that the kingdom come. I know he's a giver. He gives me daily by supplying favor and using the ministry of men. So every time you are praying, God open a door. You are not just playing a blind prayer. Father, doors must be open. Doors, no, you know how the doors are open. You are no longer in confusion. If I ask you now, how do doors open? You shouldn't be confused. It is through men. So when I'm saying, Lord, open doors, invariably I'm saying, send destiny help us. I'm no longer praying a careless prayer. I'm not shadow boxing. I know. Send me divine connectors. Send me men of influence. Send me gifted people. Send me burden bearers. If God wants to lift me, how does he lift me? He uses men. So give me the wisdom to maintain strategic relationships, oh God. Now your prayer life is fruitful. Just pray randomly. God, don't leave me like this. Change my story. Wipe my tears. It may be a sincere prayer. But I'm telling you, you will not be able to maximize that prayer because intelligence is not captured in that prayer. Now if God comes and speaks prophetically in the name of Jesus, by this week, you are returning with a testimony. While you are saying amen, you are not just saying a blind amen. There are revelations that support your receiving. What are the revelations? Favor is upon my life. That favor will make men to come to me. That favor will orchestrate events. That is the basis of your saying amen. The devil will not plant doubt now. You know why you are saying amen. Now you give the Holy Spirit room to be able to walk that word. Are we together? Every closed door be open now. You are saying amen. You know why you are saying amen? Because there is the power of the Holy Spirit that can swing open doors in the Spirit. Are you ready to pray? You're not going to stand. Please sit. We'll pray for just one minute and then I do the altar call and we're done. Please, whilst you're praying, you're seated. I'd like you to lift your voice in one minute and say, Father, change my perspective as far as the ministry of prayer is concerned 
I am a king and I am a priest. I want to begin to pray the kind of prayer that produces results. Please lift your voice and pray. You came to church outside, are you praying? The mystery of prevailing prayer. Lord, I desire my prayer life to be full, to be rich. I approach you as Abba, my source. No fear, sustainer, defender. I come to you by faith, full of reverence. I come to you asking that your kingdom find expression in my life. Let your will be done in my home, my ministry, my office. You are a giver. Send me my daily bread. I have shortchanged myself. I have lived for 30 years, 40 years, 60 years, 70 years, 80 years. I didn't know you give daily. I thought you only give once per year. Now I release my faith. Oh, giver of all good things. What do you have in store for me today? What do you have in store for my family today? Give me my daily bread. forgive me my trespasses I obtain grace to forgive those who trespass against me I live with the awareness that this is the world of men lead me not into temptation oh God deliver me from evil We are wrapping up. Then the prayer he taught ends with this: For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Keep praying. Amen. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. request that we all rise let's minimize movement everywhere all the overflows outside following online please stand please stand please stand I want to make the altar call it never tires me to give people an opportunity to run to Jesus the church is like a hospital the hospital has several departments and several compartments there is a place called intensive care unit where you treat patients whose situation is a matter of life and death please look up no matter what it is that you have and you know if jesus is not lord of your life you are truly not saved he says what shall it profit a man if he should gain the whole world and to lose his soul week in week out we have thousands of people streaming in coming here following online from all across the continent it's our assignment to give people room to truly come and make bold declarations for jesus 
you are here under the sound of my voice in this main auditorium and then outside you're saying apostle i love jesus but I'm yet to make a genuine decision. For some of you, you probably have made the decision and your life just went haywire. And you're saying, I need Jesus right now. We have just two minutes for you. Wherever you are, whilst we clap and encourage you, please very quickly run from your seat and I want you to come and stand here. Run and come and stand here. Run like there's fire on the mountain. Come like you truly mean business with Jesus. Don't be ashamed. Don't say we came in group. Uh -uh. This is a personal affair. Koinonia, is this the best you can do for them? Celebrate them as they come. Scripture says, he must be born again. He must be born again. Keep coming. Win that war tonight. Jesus is giving you an opportunity to make it right. Is this all? I still believe there are a few more people. All those in the overflows, just move to your projector stand. All the overflows, right down to the basement and then outside. Move to your projector stand. And you who are following from your home, your office, your device, wherever, I want you to connect. I'm about to lead them in this prayer. Make sure you participate in the prayer. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you for being bold. Thank you for not being ashamed of Jesus hallelujah if you're joining them please quickly come quickly come ladies and gentlemen thank you thank you for the boldness it takes a lot of boldness to come and stand before jesus and before his people but can i tell you this this is the noblest and the wisest decision any man can make in his lifetime the decision to hand over everything to jesus in exchange for his life the bible says as many as will come to him he will in no wise cast away it doesn't matter how you have been how you have lived what went right or wrong he's able to give you a new beginning lift your right hand and pray this prayer from the depth of your heart you're not reciting a poem jesus is here say after me very loud say it very clear say lord jesus i love you with all my heart and i believe that you are the son of god tonight i make you my Lord, my Savior, my King, I obtain forgiveness of sin. I receive your life. I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. And I declare that I reign from tonight and forever. I am a child of God. Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Father, thank you for this once. It's always an honor to present to you precious souls, men and women who Jesus died for. Lord, I pray according to the authority of scripture, I declare their sins forgiven. I declare that you give them a new beginning even by your spirit. The power of Satan, the power of sin, the grave is broken over your life. From today, I declare that you are commended to the ministry of the word and the ministry of the spirit the lord himself will build you to be mighty in the spirit you go from glory to glory in the name of jesus christ amen and amen god bless you now very quickly thank you i'd like you to please follow this gentleman waving the placard up and they'll just have a word with you and you'll be back to your seat please celebrate them very quickly celebrate them very quickly hallelujah thank you for your patience just give me two minutes we stretched a bit now um i really apologize i i honor everyone this is a house of honor we make it a culture to not trivialize people i know that there are so many people noble people who come from all over this city and around this nation and as much as god grants us grace we do well to recognize um a few people and honor them but please let me apologize in advance if for any reason you're not recognized and you're not accorded honor openly and publicly it doesn't mean that we do not recognize you one of our pillars in this ministry is honor and so um, i'm saying that so that i cannot promise that every week we will just um, indefinitely recognize people and honor them we'll do our best to make sure that as much as we have the details we communicate that honor but should in case we're unable to do that please 
uh, forgive let me just honor four or five people very quickly and then we'll share the grace and we'll be on our way praise the lord i want to as always honor um honorable dr john abraham and his wife thank you thank you thank you ma this time around you're with your wife and then i'm told um he came with a pastor missionary um pastor dr roman did i get that right a missionary from poland blessings blessings to you sir thank you hallelujah and then um honorable blessed honor the sa to the benway state governor blessings to you thank you he was here last week also on religious matters and he came with his entourage also the lord bless you and then honorable forgive me is it orugu if i didn't get that right please forgive me also the sa to the governor of benway state on youth and student affairs are you here sir the lord bless you thank you appreciate you thank you so so much and then um we have mrs hawa philip aduda the wife of senator philip aduda representing the fct thank you the lord bless you truly honor you ma really appreciate you every other dignitary every other noble personality we truly honor you and i'm sure that the protocol will just direct you so we have a word briefly after service the lord honor you the lord increase everyone thank you for coming now a very important announcement for the first time in abuja next week sunday will be our first miracle service <laughs> hallelujah please listen listen please do not miss it for anything come early now just two instructions i want you to come with your request write everything that has troubled you everything that will not let you go there is a god that answers by fire we are going to collate all of the requests even for your loved ones who are unable to make it please bring it we are going to be praying at the altar here if you have points of contact documents that you want the lord to visit you with please do well to come with them and then for all our international guests please do well to reach our pr lines so that they can help arrange your coming especially with the whole pro, uh, covid formalities and, and so on and so forth and to let you know that we have a very able a very capable medical team that can attend to your medical needs should in case you need anything around um, you need medical attention in as much as we have several doctors and consultants here we have a dedicated medical team of professionals to attend to you by god's grace pastor nathaniel bassi will be with us next week sunday here so it's going to be a wonderful time in the name of jesus christ time is 5 p.m on the dot we start so that we can finish on time are we being blessed tonight the lord bless you in the name of jesus i decree and declare that he will cause his face to shine upon you in the name of jesus the lord lift up his countenance upon you and may he give you peace I pray for you and yours this week beginning you are blessed in Jesus name you carry the favor of God in the name of Jesus you go from glory to glory from grace to grace from power to power everything that does not honor Jesus you stand upon it this week in the name of Jesus Christ you return by next week as signs and wonders in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus Christ after the grace do well to greet one or two people before you leave and please um, because of the security situation i want you to cooperate with the protocol and the security team then again let me plead respectfully please do not waylay any of our dignitaries who are people of honor let's do well to not embarrass them praise the lord everyone is honored everyone is celebrated but please let's cooperate with the protocol and the security team inside and outside let's share the grace the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you and see you next week. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. 
pray 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 for your destiny salaska de bashkana kata branda kata kato kata branda kata bako tosko to pray kata 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 the face of development lord grant me the discipline 